The itsy bitsy spider went up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. And the itsy bitsy spider went up the spout again. Let me introduce you to Bo Miles, a unique and likable guy. Everyday life, friends and family he makes up the honest Here we are, another episode of the artistry of I am he who shall not be named. (laughs) I am Bo Miles, first of his name, the Warriors King. (laughs) Man, that was freaking game. Game of Thrones was fire. Game of Thrones was fire. Um, Any anyone who has not seen or ears have not heard should definitely should definitely check it out now the reason why i started out with that little nursery rhyme is because that that nursery rhyme i've heard it however many times right thousands of times over my life over my lifetime I could go down and cry if I let it all now leave Right, so, so I've, I've I've heard it thousands of times, but it was it was around this time last year. Oh yeah, I want to say it was like this time last year. Matter of fact, it was um. It was probably around the fall. It was before October because I thought about it, right? I was talking with uh, one of my workers and I was training them how to load the trucks, right? And I'm training them and, you know, we're just trading stories. We're trading war stories. We're outlaws on the rise. real because I despise. Look at my eyes. We're trading war stories. So we're trading stories. And and I get, I think maybe the next day it, it hits me that, like, yo, I'm constantly searching, Right? But I still haven't found what I'm looking for. So I'm out there constantly searching, right? We're we're digging for gold. And the environment may change. The weather may change. But the fact that we're digging, that's the only thing that we can control. So when we go to that nursery rhyme, it talks about the spider Looking to achieve a goal, right? He wants to go up the water spout. But then comes some type of hindrance. Then comes opposition. And wash the spider out. <laughs> right? I'm not, not because of his control, the sun comes out and dries up all the rain. Right? So... Those two elements that that what shut him down and what gave him the ability to do it again was not under his control, but his control was like, yo, I'm going to um, go up that spout again. Now, if it doesn't rain like now, you know, if it, if it let's say it rains every however many days. So in the period that it's not raining, look, he go up and down or she can go up and down as much as they like. But when it rains, it pours. <laughs> it ain't no sunshine when she's gone. Do, do, do. 
right? So it just, it just, it came to me like, yo, I mean, that's what you're doing, right? So you just got to stay consistent. It doesn't matter if it rains, like, yo, all right, if it rains and you get, you know, you get washed out or you can't move that day, like, yo, that's fine. But each day that you are allowed to move, like, yo, just keep moving. Because if you keep moving, eventually it's not going to rain. And that opportunity for you to go up the spout again <laughs> will come. So I uh, preface with that because I didn't want, a part of me didn't want to record today. And I usually just go with that. Like, yo, if I don't feel like recording, I don't record. And remember, we're talking about consistency with the uh, itsy bitsy spider. Now, under whatever circumstance that I cannot record, well, then I cannot record. But it's about just being consistent. Just keep And Man, there's a good thing. I'm going to learn it. It's from uh, 1090 Jake, right? So I'm going to, uh, it, it's about how your thoughts and your habits and your, your words. So I think as your thoughts become words and then your words become habits and then your habits become action or it's, it's, it's along that line. And, um, you know, this is early 1090 G I'm rocking with y'all. Y'all rocking with me, right? Look, man, I, I, how can you not love just everybody, right? What the world? Knees now is love, sweet love. It's the only thing that is just too little love, right? But it just enforces or reinforces that consistency and just the commitment. It's not even about consistency. It's about commitment, commitment to your vision, commitment to yourself, right? Because that commitment is going to govern consistency as it needs to be, right? What you're really doing is just making that commitment. So, you know, like I said, I didn't really want to, I didn't feel like recording. You know, it's a, it's a huge family tragedy that, that struck, you know, and, but I'm like, is it that? Is it that tragedy? Or is it just me looking for any reason not to do something? Because because I'm not seeing the results that I want. Right? Because I'm not seeing what I want to see. So I'm going to use any any type of excuse that I can get my hands on to not go up that, that water spout on a dry, sunny day. A lovely day, lovely day, lovely day, lovely day, right? So, so that's why, you know, I'm like, nah, I gotta, you know, I gotta, I gotta keep going. I gotta keep going. Even I even went to work and, you know, one of the guys like, yo, why are you even here? And it's like, I have to be here, you know, like now if something comes up and I can't be there, well, then, all right. You know, it's not about, look, we're just going to keep going until you just fall down and die. Like, no, that's not it, right? But when you're feeling down and you're feeling whatever, and then you start to come up with all these excuses. Like, so I've been doing, I think I started last last week, um, I started doing my push-ups again. Right. So I did like a hundred, a hundred a day. And. um, Man, I'm waiting for this freaking sub to expire on this female streamer like, yo, I no longer want to get any notifications about you streaming. Uh, Somebody brought me a sub and I'm thank you. I'm gracious for that sub. Um, But yeah, I'm done. I'm done with her. But um. I started doing my push-ups again, and, uh, you know, I was doing 100 push-ups a day, so this was last week, 100 a day, and however many pull-ups, so I was just able to do one pull-up, right, so 100 
push-ups and one pull-up. So then I'm like, all right, this week I'm going to increase. So I'm doing 120 push-ups and however many pull-ups, right? So I'm up to two. And yesterday I think I did uh, 1.8, right? So if you look at the bar, you're saying, okay, um, all the way down versus all the way up is one, all the way down. Halfway is half, right? All like I almost made it to two. So that's why I'm like 1.8. So I don't really count it as two, right? But I want to get to where I can do two pull ups, right? So um, today, like I said, I, I didn't want to record, I didn't want to do my push ups. And I remember just my body, like everything, an excuse is always there for you. An excuse is always there. And it's uh, it's up to us to to realize, like, all right, it's just, you know, it's just an excuse because, like, boom, like I said, like, yo, I hit, you know, it's a real serious tragedy, but, like, yo, my body, it hurts, <laughs> right, from these 100 push-ups every day and these trying to do as many pull-ups, it's like, man, my body hurts, so I'm trying to come up with every reason, the rationale. Look, man, shh, you need to take some time off, you know. Look, why don't you just give them less? And it's like, man, nah, I got it. So I dropped down and I did my first um, 20, my first twizzy. I gave him my first twizzy and it was hard. It was like, jeez. And I'm like, all right, well, we got one on the board, right? So every, t- every twizzy is one. And... um I'm like, all right, got one, you know, six more, right? Six more. So then I broke it up between my two trucks because I have two trucks that I load. So just three. So I give them three on one, give them three on each truck, right? So I'm like, all right, gave them one on this truck. Let me give them one on the other truck. And it's like, all right, well, that's a third of the way down. So then, yo, know, give them two on this truck. Like, yo, that's more than half of the way done. Give them two in the next truck. Now, you only got to give them one more. You only got to give them, you only got to give each truck just one more, right? Let's just, look, if you need to go ahead and take 30, 30 minutes, you know, regroup, let it, let your, let your muscles kind of, you know, Get back to one, and we started back at one. Yeah, like a dream come true, too. Right? So, so um, you know, I'm like, I'm like, all right, all right. So I gave him, you know, I did my 120. Um, I'm gonna do my pull ups, which you know, I was about to say pull up, <laughs> but look, man, I might crack too today. You know, I might crack too. Now I did hit two um Monday, but it wasn't back to back. Okay. It wasn't back to back. It was just one and then I tried to do two, but I didn't. And then I waited a little bit, maybe forty five minutes and I gave him two, right? So um but I just want to do like one, two. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. But, you know, it's like, look, man, you can't all these excuses like excuses are always around us. Excuses are always around us for us to not do something. So, like I said, like, yo, I didn't want to. I'm studying this new thing. So. um, People that's close to me, they know. That drawing, like, yo, that is something that I've always wanted to be able to do, was to draw. Um, but I've never, like, I, I, I've never had that ability to, and I would say, I mean, because I feel like, I feel like if you can move some type of limb or or if you can have a pencil or a pen or anything in your hand to where you can create a line, right, followed up by another line, then you can draw, right? So can you draw a perfect circle? Uh, that's up for debate. But can you draw uh, an approximate circle? Yeah, right? So can I draw 
an approximate of things, and I would say, yeah, no matter what it is. So I think no matter what someone asked me to draw, I think if I drew it, you would know what it was, right? But to be more refined, that's that's always been my struggle, right? To be like refined. So I started that and, you know, I'm like, boom, I'm feeling good. Like I, I feel good with the progress. Um, I'm only hitting it on the weekends because it's like, yo, I'm working hard. And uh, then I started this new venture, right, so that I can get into and, and make some more money. So I started that Monday. I picked up this course, and uh, and it was expensive. And I could have easily, because he, he gave like a little small outline, right? It's not as detailed. Like once I brought the course and finalized the course, I could see the outline. So what little bit of um, the outline that he gave in this presentation and the sales letter, I could have used that and just Googled, right? And YouTube, right? YouTube is a, is a, is a huge asset. And I think that if anyone who wants to start anything, wants to start something new and don't have the money, um, I think, yo, YouTube is the way, right? And it's, it's like, yo, time and time again, you're going to, it's not going to let you down. You can find all of the information on YouTube. And I feel like you when you use YouTube, it actually is going to be better because you're customizing what you want to learn and how you want to learn and at the pace that you want to learn. So I feel like YouTube is uh, is huge. Like, yo, it's far as like if you're really trying to learn something. Like, yo, you can like you can do it. You can do it and become an expert. Right. But I also understand the value of finding a mentor, whether it's a virtual mentor or an actual person, like an actual person is going to be better than a virtual uh, mentor. Right. Um, But uh, either way, no matter what, you you just have to uh, you have to take that plunge. Right. So. In my music studies, my musical studies, I was um, studying with uh, Bob Thompson. And Bob Thompson is a living legend. He's um, from New York. He's like, yo, he is, is, he's a jazz uh, piano player, right? Uh, we would say pianist, but look, jazz piano player. And, I mean, he's awesome. He's great, right? And he was saying to me, he was like, um, he was like, yo, any book that you buy, if you can get one thing from that book, just one thing, then it was worth it, right? So whether it's five dollars or five thousand dollars, whatever you buy, if you can get one thing, one piece of information, one thing that's going to help you in your journey, it was worth it because whatever you spend on it, the fact that you can spend that on it means that you. You like, yo, you're not dying, right? You're not even even if that's your last, that's your last five thousand dollars, that's your last uh fifty fifty eleven dollars. And you gain something, you gain anything from that, it's gonna help you, right? It's going to uh it's it's gonna help you and it's gonna be worth it. Even if someone else pays far less, right? Because I think that like that's my biggest problem. And we're still in the intro. Let's see how long is this intro. <laughs> it's like 18 minutes. It's an 18-minute intro. Okay. So um, let's, let's set this over here. I try to be aware because um, what, what? Just the gravity, right? Your cables and cords and how they lay. And over time, it causes a shortage and, you know, things like that. So. I try to be aware, so I guess I can actually set it down on the ground. That way, it's not as much of a pull on the cord. So, yeah, we just put it down right next to us. Let's adjust the mic so we can look at it and make sure our levels are are fine. And we're comfortable, but you know, so like that's where I'm at with that. And it's like because I'm uh, because I'm doing this new thing. I'm in the education part of it, the building 
the knowledge is like, yo, um, so then I was even using that. Yo, uh, maybe, look, I can't record because, you know, I got to keep studying. And so it's like, yo, man, it just sounds like a bunch of excuses, <laughs> right? Because you're not seeing the results that you want to see. And it just goes back to a conversation, right? We're talking about commitment. We're talking about consistency. Well, then we got to focus on, okay, what are you actually focusing on? Because if you focus on the right thing, then then it can help. It can give you wins, right? So if I'm focusing on doing these 100 uh, push-ups, and I'm just, look, I just got to hit my number, right? Right now I'm up to 120. Next week I'm going to be on 140, right? So if I... Look, if I can just focus on just doing these 120 push-ups, just give them 120 and just however many pull-ups, if I just focus on that, then the result of that will be what I want, right? So you guys know, I think I, I spoke on I'm getting tattooed, but I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about that as well. I know the main topic will be um, Dennis and my dad, but you know maybe that may be next week. I don't know, like, but we're going to get to it, right? It just depends on how um how this goes right but all right if i'm getting all right, i'm getting these tattoos it's like yo and remember we're talking about being healthy we're like we're talking about uh image we're talking about looking a little bit better right shoulders just a little bit more beefy chest is a little bit more ground round than uh so so if if I'm just focusing on that, right? I'm just focusing on um yo, I, I want my chest to be more ground round, right? I want uh shoulders for days, okay? I want my arms to be uh kissed by He Man himself. Mwah, by the power of Grace Call, right? I want my back like Arnold himself just came and just Slick down that cocoa butter on my back, like, ugh, right? Look, <laughs> if I'm just focusing on that without the means of how to get it, each day that I look at my back and it look like um, Bart Simpson oiled me down, well, I'm gonna get discouraged, right? I'm gonna get discouraged. I'm looking at my my chest. I'm looking like a stick man out here, out here. I'm looking like a stick man. Looking at my arms. I'm looking like Kermit the Frog when your room looks kind of weird, right? So it's like, yo, those, if you focus on the wrong things, then it's easy for you to give up. It's easy for you to stop because you're not even focusing on the right things. But if I'm focusing on my number, all right, I got to get up. Look, I got to do my 120, right? Then... By focusing on that number, it produces a result. And even and I'm not focusing on the result. I'm just focusing on the um, the mechanic. So now I can get a win, right? Boom! I gave him. I gave look, man. I gave him. I gave him 120 today. I gave him 120 yesterday, right? I'm gonna give him 120 tomorrow. Eventually, I'm gonna get up to two pull ups. Right? Look, I'm going to get the two pull-ups. Eventually, I'm going to get to 10 pull-ups. Like, yo, like, that is crazy. Especially, I'm struggling to do two. And just thinking and knowing that one day, I'll be able to give them 10 straight. <clears throat> just just focusing on that number. Now, just focusing on those numbers, like, yo, without focusing on, you know, Arnold, Arnold. With that, with that cocoa, just cocoa in my back. Uh, who, who else? Freaking Idris Alba, oil in my shoulders for days, right? Boom! Without focusing on that, I'm getting a little bit closer and closer. So, you know, as we talk about commitment and consistency, <clears throat> if what it is that I'm focusing on is not producing enough wins 
for me to keep going. Well, then I got to step back, right? Step back and focus on something else then. And the, because I'm too far in the chain. I'm too far down in the chain now. If so, if I'm, I'm worried about, um, growing this podcast, right? Cause I want, I want 30,000 downloads a month. So that way I can get some type of advertising. That way I can get some type of money, right? So if I'm focusing on the money, then it's like, yo, I'm just only thinking about, I don't even know how much you would even get. I don't even know how much these advertisers are even paying, right? But if I'm only focusing on that and I'm like, boom, I, I, I'm too far in the chain. I'm too far down in the chain. I need to step back. Okay, um, advertisers or a show. Now I'm, I'm only looking at the show. And then, boom, we're looking at um, the number, right? So before we get to the show, it really in the chain, we go the money. Then we go the the high um, download numbers, right? Subscribers. We're looking at that. We're saying that, okay, this is uh, 30,000, right? 30,000 downloads. Like, I think you probably can, um, you probably can start attracting uh, <clears throat> advertisers, before thirty thousand, but thirty thousand, I believe, is like a good number to where you can you can go in. Like, yo, I got thirty thousand downloads. I think really at that point they come to you just like with, with your credit and the money that you make. Like, like I remember, I remember not getting no offers. Like nobody was offering no credit cards. Nobody was offering anything, and then getting to a point where boom, I'm getting offers. Like, yo, you want you want some credit? You want some credit? So. I know that once my downloads a month kick up, like they're going to come to me. Right. So, boom, 30,000. So first we was looking at, you know, the money, however much it doesn't matter how much. But then we was looking at we too far is too far. We got to step back. 30,000 downloads. Man, that's too huge. Step back. Right. And we get to the podcast, Uh, the podcast popularity, right? We got to step back. We keep stepping back, right? Until we can get a win. So if my only win is, all right, you're putting up an episode every week. Let's, 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 let's finish out this year, 2022. Um, you know, if, if we don't die, let's just finish out the year with being consistent, dropping an episode every week as much as you can. I mean, I may go on vacation. Well, look, man, you got to do two episodes. That way you can uh, time it and then, you know, it'll still release. So no matter what, like, yo, because if that's the goal, right, if that's something that we can do, we can put out an episode every week. And when we put that out, if that's just look, I just want to get out an episode every week, then boom, that's that's a win. So when I put it up, hey, I did it. You know, so even though I'm not winning in those uh, in, in any of the other links in the chain, I step back to a point to where I can win. Right. Because we need those wins. You need those wins because without those wins, it's just what what, uh, what is it called? Positive feedback or positive reinforcement without positive reinforcement. Then you can uh, you can you can give up. You can quit. You can stop that when that rain comes. And it washes you out like, yo, you won't have the will to get back up when it when it dries up. You know, now that the sun came out and dried up all the rain, like, yo, you don't even have the will to go back up because you've been washed down so many times. Right. So that's why it's like, yo, just building that consistency, building that commitment. It's like, yo, step back and further and how it doesn't matter how far <laughs> Back in that chain, you need to step back so that you can get some wins in in defeat, right? Because um, no question about it, like, yo, you being defeated, you know, you being defeated. And uh, that's just like, you know, my jujitsu, like, which I need to um, I need to bring my grappling dummy. I made one, you know, I made a grappling dummy and I was thinking about buying one. So that this way I wouldn't have to go back uh, to West Virginia and get, pick it up. But it's like, yo, man, I need to get my grappling dummy because the reason why I'm not uh, doing jujitsu right now is because of my tattoos. Because, you know, you don't want to be have these open, you know, because it's a it's a um, what is it? It's an injury, right? A tattoo is a skin injury. 
it's like a sunburn. You don't want to have like a you be trying to recover from a skin injury and you out rolling on the mats and being all sweaty and just being uh, subjected to ringworm and all other type of bacteria and just everything else that come along with grappling, right? So you don't want to be doing that because then you might get a staph infection. It's so much, but it's like, all right, but the show must go on, right? Like, yo, grappling, you still got to do that, all right? And I don't do it because I might get into a fight because I really try to avoid, I try to avoid that. I did enough fighting as a kid. I don't want to fight. So my grappling is not because I want to uh, protect myself. It's really not. Like, I I do my grappling just because I just like it. You know, as we're going to get into with my dad, that's just something that my dad, we, we, we just wrestled. You know, we just, just as kids, we wrestled. Uh, my dad, he, he watched wrestling. We met wrestlers, right? So grappling has been, um, is just, is a part of me. Right. It's just a part like, yo, that's just at my core. That's who I am. Right. I don't watch um, professional wrestling anymore. But I still I still love it. Right? I still it's still a part of me like that's that's a part of my past. And, uh, you know, that's something that that me and my dad, we would do. We would watch it. So, you know, that's just uh, that's just crazy. So, you know. That grappling is a part of me, so I need my I need my grappling dummy, right? Like if I if I had a twin, like yo, we would, we would be wrestling, right? We would be doing jujitsu, we would be doing judo, like just all of that, just perfecting and and leveling up in our in our grappling. So, so yeah, I think you know, look, a thirty minute <laughs> a thirty minute intro. Um, next week. Before we kick the show off, next week I'm going to start introducing other elements to incorporate. So I'm going to record on Tuesday, do my um, post editing, which I'm just going to start like dropping in sound bites. So instead of me singing them or which I don't know, I might keep saying like I don't know, but because um I think a lot of times when I'm, if I listen to something over, I get more sound ideas that I would like to fit into, um, fit into the episode. Right. So I think, I think I'm going to start like, cause I was going to do movie clips, you know, I would just listen and then as I'm talking, just drop in some type of movie clip, like, who do you work for? You know, or uh, Goth, the, the citizens of the people of Gotham City have proven like, oh, man, you know, so. Uh, <laughs> so we'll see. I'm, but I, I think I'm going to start, you know, taking two days um, to f- drop either some music clips or movie clips into the episode. We'll see. Right. So I record on one day. Drop the movie clips on the other day and then upload, right? So if we did a Tuesday, Wednesday type of schedule. Right now we're just on a Wednesday schedule. So we'll see. But that's something that, that I want to do. And uh, I think I'm going to, I'm definitely going to start, right? At some point. I I think right now the format is, look, it is what it is. Like this we we can't control right destiny like 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 i was telling you with that tragedy like like yo that's that's destiny and we can say what a person could have shoulda coulda wouldas these shoulda coulda wouldas i kept them so long right like we can we can sing that but ultimately, like when, because you know, I've been watching Biggie. I still, I still watch like my Biggie, um, my Biggie videos on YouTube and Tupac videos on YouTube. I still watch. So, like, uh, I think G- Gene Deal, he he was a bodyguard for Puff. So right now, I mean, you know, he's doing a lot of interviews, and Lil C's was doing some interviews, and you know, so forth. And it's like. 
it's like, man, you know, you just think about that and the, the finality of death. It's like, man, you know, only if uh, if Big didn't go to L.A. or only if he didn't go to that party, if he just would have stayed in his room or, you know, but ultimately like, yo, that that was his destiny. And Tupac, the same way, like, you know, man, if he just, you know, if uh, he would have just stayed in that hotel room with Kadada Jones, you know, he, he maybe he would still be here today. I mean. He was on a trajectory, though. So, you know, it's like, yo, that's his destiny. And it's it's a sad destiny from um, from our standpoint as fans. Right. And then we start talking about family members who um, who pass on like, yo, like it's sad that, you know, they pass whenever they pass. But like, yo, that's their destiny. You know, we all have it. We all have our destiny. So with with the show. You know, with the podcast, with the gaming, with the books, with the whatever. Like, yo, we all have a destiny. We're all under a weather pattern that we cannot control. Now, I I can say that, all right, I know that it um I know that it rains more over here, so let me go over there. Right? If you want rain, like so if you plant seeds and you need rain, right? We plant in seeds and we we know like yo this is uh this is like yo they have apple trees over here it's a bunch of apple trees um so you know if we plant our seed over there then we we'll, maybe yo we have a better chance of our apple tree growing right we can do that like as humans that that's the good part about being a human is that we can is that we can do that we can go and look at a something, look at a pattern and see like, yo, this, you know, I want, I want to grow this apple tree. Let me go where apple trees are and just put my seeds down there. Right. Maybe find some apple tree growers and uh, talk to them and see how, you know, what, what, what's some best techniques. If we need rain, like if I know I'm in the desert, if I'm, I've been born in the desert, I live in a desert, but I, I want an apple tree like, yo, I can get to the Delta or I can just go keep going past the apple, the, uh, the desert. Right. Get to a forest, get to some more greenery. Boom. Try to, you know, try to kick that apple tree up there. Right. So like we, we know that. But all the other factors that play into it, it really just boils down to destiny. It's like, yo, if. If you if you in your life, if like, yo, if it's meant for you to do that, then you will do that. And if it's not, it's not like we think about basketball, play, about anything. Yo, it's all about numbers and time, like far as where you are in time. So right now at, at this time, people are living like more and more people are living like lords. So if we go back to what? Let's go 1200, uh, 900, right? Uh, 200 AD. We go to 200 AD and we go to Europe because, I mean, this system is based on like a Western civilization, right? You can go anywhere in the world, any civilization, right? It doesn't matter. 900 AD. However, the aristocrats and the lords were living during that time is more people in today's time living like that. So when you go back then, it was maybe only, uh, let's say, 10 or 20 people, right? Only 20 people was living like that. They had uh, they had a bed, a comfortable bed, and they had um, clothes like like just. They could wash that, have their clothes washed, right? But all, like, yo, they had clean clothes. They had uh, semi okay teeth, especially over in Europe. You know, they had bad teeth over in Europe. So you had a small number of people who had, who had decent teeth. But boom, look at today. Like, you got millions of people with decent teeth. Right. To the point that like, oh, it's, you got to go beyond decent now. 
right? It's so common and so normal. They're like, yo, this is this is nothing, right? So it's about time. So if you want, like, we, I can't say we all want it, but I know that I want, right? I want a certain level of 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 life, right? I want to experience a certain level of life. <clears throat> now, in my time, in this day and age, there's more people living the type of life that I want to live. But if if things keep moving in this trajectory, right, we'll know that, let's say, um, a thousand years from now, like, yo, it's going to be a huge number of people that, that are going to be living the life that I want to live. Like, it's going to be a huge number. It's going to be like, yo, crazy. That's just going to be standard, a standard way of life. Everything that I want, the things that I want, like, yo, that's just going to be common. Everybody's going to have it. It's just going to be normal. So, you know, boom, we're going to aspire to something else. I really don't care about where it is in relative to others, right? The type of life that I want to live, I don't care if people perceive it as the very bottom or the very top. Like, I don't care about public perception. This is just something that I want for myself. Like, I want it, right? Like, like I want this type of life. And it doesn't matter. Like, so in, in a future where that, wow, man, that's the bottom. Well, look, I'm good with that then. Look, I'm good with the bottom. Because, uh, you know, like, yo, I was born and grew up on the bottom in my time. So, so look, I know how bad it can get. Like, I know how bad it can get. Like, yo, I got evicted on my birthday. We got put out, right? We got evicted on my birthday. Like, yo, happy birthday to you. Get the hell out of my house, right? So, uh, so like, yo, I know, like, yo, I know. And, and it gets even, you know, it gets even darker than that. So I got to even be grateful for for my life, like, yo, and for the things that I've experienced, because I know people who've experienced a lot worse. Right. So, you know, we're like I'm chasing a certain lifestyle. But if that lifestyle was the very bottom at whatever time in history that it's just like, yo, this is just a standard. Like, yo, I'm good with that. Like, trust me, I am good. Like, I don't care to, you know, to be a man amongst men. Like, I don't care about none of that, man. Like, yo, I'm good. <laughs> you know, I'm good, man. I just want to draw. I just want to make some music, practice and train in jujitsu and, you know, just being like moving, like having that freedom to move as I see fit and to take on the the curiosities and the whims of my imagination. Like, yo, I, I, I want to have that ability. So if that's the, the standard at some point in, in human history, like, yo, that's where I want to be. I want to go there. You feel me? Like, yo, because right now, right now it's not the standard. But our standard, especially here in America, like, yo, our standard in America is... Is a lot better than some other places, right? And, you know, like, yo, Baltimore, especially, you know, the part that I grew up in, like, yo, that's like a third, third world country. We're talking about no gas and electricity. Um, you, already, you got water. <clears throat> Boom. At least, yo, at least you got clean water. But even that shit can be cut off, right? So. And there's nobody there to help you. No one cares. And the world's in secrecy. Because that's really what we that's really what we're we're facing now. It's just secrecy. Everybody is, look, I can't you can't know something because then you're gonna take away from me. So we got that that secrecy. So we're we're dealing with that. We're we're dealing with that secrecy. And as I was uh you know, about the talk about the wrestling, the wrestling part. <laughs> 
of my growing of my childhood and just remember my dad, I was about to cry. I was about to start crying. You know, which I I always like whenever I know I notice and it's always been like that. Um, whenever I talk about my dad, like like it makes me cry. Right? And I feel that when I think like, but why? Like why? Okay, all right, you miss you miss him. But I think the real big part is just the change that that I was able to make. Like he never got a chance to see that change. You know, and and that's that's you know that's hard, and you like yo that's that's it, like that's the finality of death. You know, so as it rears its. Can't even say ugly head, but as it reared its ugly head on us yet again, it's like, yo, it's just a reminder of that finality. That like, yo, death is is final. Now, from a a religious standpoint, right? It's not. It's not final and you know. So I'm not I'm not arguing that, you know. I'm not arguing belief like, I, you know, I'm saying as we know it, <laughs> right, as we know it, like, yo, that's, it's final, right? So all of the, the change, and you know, we're just talking about our loved ones, you know, at, like, yo, you, you want them to be able to see that change. You know, you want them to be able to see the growth, right? And 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 being able, like, yo, to, to be able to, to depend on you for a little bit, right? Because as a kid, you, you can't really help. You can't help. You can't help out. You can't even get in the game, right? It's like you're watching the game, you're watching the NBA game, and... uh and you can't you can't get in. Okay? <laughs> you can't get on the court. Like, yo. And you know, once you get out there on the court, like boom, now you can you can help, right? I think it was a statement LeBron said that, you know, he's gonna he wants to retire when he gets the chance to play with his son. You know, like, yo, get a chance. He wanna play on the same team as his son. And then he can retire. Like, so he wants to, like, yo, whatever he has to do, if he has to juice, he has to get juicy in the end, right? Like, yo, he's going to do whatever it takes for him to, to be able to play with his son. You know how, like, yo, that's huge. That is, that's big. That's really big, right? That's really big to be able to, you know, to play with your son. It's, it's hard enough, really, if your kids are into the same thing that you're into. Like, yo, because it doesn't always it doesn't always end up like that. Now, some people, it does, right? But it's, that is not 100%, you know? Just because you are doing something, that doesn't mean that your, your kids will do that, right? Now, when it happens, like, yo, be grateful because I think... People can can take that stuff for for granted. Take it for like, yo, I mean, this is just what it is. Like, nah, it's not. I'm telling you, there's a lot of people out here who kids are not nothing like they like they are. And they're doing the same thing that you're doing. Like, yo, you you are not special in that. 
ah, you know, look, I'm just a good dad. My kids want to, no, nah, no, nah, look, it's things beyond our control, right? So if you if your kids are into the same things that you're into, like, yo, man, that's great. And I ain't talking about, you know, back when, you know, when you're freaking uh, stalling over them, you feel me? You just like, yo, you're... Uh, <laughs> You're four or five. You're going to do what I tell you to do, right? Like, I ain't talking about that dictatorship. I ain't talking about dictatorship. I'm talking about when when your family dynamics become a democracy and they get to say and have some say-so in what they want. And you actually listen. Because, you know, I, it could be where my kid want to do, you know, whatever. But, nah, nah, you're going to do this because, you know, because... Because I say so. So I'm not talking about those situations. I'm talking about a genuine situation where your kid loves the same. You and your kid love, you know, whatever. If it's just watching football. And y'all been, you know, been watching the Super Bowl together all your life. You know, like, and, and that's what y'all do. You know, like, yo, like, that's a, that's a good thing. You know, because uh, it doesn't always happen. So... For for them to want to actually become a basketball player and y'all actually play together on that team, like yo man, that's a good that's a good goal as a basketball player because it really unless you're relevant, your kid doesn't doesn't have a guarantee into to sports. It doesn't matter how good you were or how good you are, right? Because really, but once your kid comes up, is how good you were. Right. It doesn't matter. Like, yo, OK, you uh, Michael Jordan, but like, yo, if you're not playing. Like, I mean, look, man, we're not going to pick up your son. Right. If you Michael Jordan and you getting ready, your son is getting ready for college and we're picking we're picking kids. We're picking the, the future st- uh, students so that we can get a championship. We can get a ring, right? We can get the to get this money. We can get those plaques. Are right, you Michael Jordan? But and I hear you know I hear that you you know you was a great like yo. I, we all love you and you know, I, I buy your shoes just like everybody else. But we got this other kid over there who's actually putting up numbers like yo. He is the best. And we get to pick him or pick your son. Like, yo, I'm going to go with him. You feel me? Because, like, yo, why get Michael Jordan's son when I can get Michael Jordan? (laughs) Right? This kid is the best in college. But if Michael Jordan could say, yo, you pick up my son, I'm going to drop down in age and, and I'm going to play on the team. Right. Boom. His son, his daughter, anybody like, yo, if he could, yo, all right, I'm going to, you know, transition. I'm going to drop down to uh, 20, 22, right? 22, 20 year old uh, freshman or however, whatever, you know, you got to be prom as a as a college student, whatever that age is, you know, 19 or whatever. I'm going to drop down to 19. I'm going to uh, reassign my gender. And I'm gonna play on this team, right? Y'all gonna get the publicity, y'all, and y'all gonna get my skill if y'all pick up my daughter, like yo, or you pick up my son. Boom, that's a no brainer. So, boom. Once you get to the NBA, right? And this is something that that no other player has been able to do is to hang around or the NFL and music. It's the same way, like yo, it's the same. Like, no one has been able to put their kid on. Like, no one has been able to do that. And and sustain it, right? Because you can get them, all right, we'll, you know, we'll get them in whatever school. But like I said, if you got whoever's the best, like, people are following them. So your son, okay, they're on this team, but y'all not putting up wins, so it really don't matter. Y'all not... You know, doing this, y'all not doing that. Like, yo, it doesn't matter. Okay, all right, we got for a little bit, right? For five minutes, you get um, recognition. But 
All right, you're a celebrity. You're a local celebrity. That's it. But you're not. But you're next to whoever's the best on the team. And whoever's the best on the team, they don't have your celebrity. So that's going to make them even better. That's going to make them shine even more. Right? So it's that reason why this hasn't been done. So, you know, if LeBron can do it, if he can hang around that long, right, which, I mean, if his son was that, you know, was that good, I mean, he wouldn't even have to hang around that long. But um, he wouldn't have to hang around that long because I think his his kid is in high school. Yeah, I think – no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think his kid is in high school. Remember, LeBron went from high school to NBA, right? Uh, Mari Stoudemire, um, what's that guy? I'm not into basketball like that. Uh, I'm not into any sports. But, like, grappling, fighting, stuff like that. Um, uh, Melo, right? He he came through Baltimore as well on his journey, right, to the NBA. So, like, those type of cats, like, boom, they went Kobe. So, I mean, it could it could happen, but, but uh, like, yo, I don't think that's in uh, Bronze. What is it, Bronny? I don't think that's in his, uh, in his fate. I mean, you never know, right? But, again, like, if we hark back to destiny, right? Like, destiny, that's something that we cannot, we cannot avoid, right? So, if it's, if he's destined to do it, then he will do it, right? He'll go, boom, straight, and then. Both of them will play. Other than that, you got to take the long way around, right? Now, he, he is getting some pull because of his dad. But if that doesn't work, then you take the long way around. He got to at least do a couple years in college, right? So I think he got to at least do his high school year, do a couple years in college. So that will make you know LeBron playing at least two to three he has to hang around and compete at that high level for at least three more years, right? And it's like, yo, he can do it, especially if, you know, that's the goal that he wants for himself. Like, yo, he can do it. So, you know, I just commend him on that, right? I commend him on that because, because you know, I would want to have, you know, been a man and and been around my father. Right. I would have want to have done that. You know, and, and a lot of the talks that that I had with uh, with other older men, I would like to just have had that talk with my father because because, you know, what they say? Uh, Biggie, he said, uh, bitches come, bitches go. That's why I bust my nut and I'll be out the fucking dope, you know. Right. So. That statement is for is for friends, right? Friends come and friends go, right? But 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 family is there forever, right? Even like siblings, they don't like each other. Look, man, this, and I remember, uh, I was in I was in a church. It's like revival. It was during the revival. So, uh, and two sisters, they was hashing it out in tongues. <laughs> They was just hashing it out. You feel me? Like, oh, they they just speaking in tongues to the congregation, both of them, you know, yelling their point in tongues to, <laughs> to the congregation. I mean, that was uh that was crazy. <laughs> that was crazy. But even even them, even those sisters, those two sisters who haven't talked, they haven't spoken in uh Shamalama Bota and the they haven't spoken in that long, how however long that meant, you know. Whatever you know, whatever that means, like yo, they they haven't spoken in that long, like yo, they still sisters. Like it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that y'all haven't spoken in that long. Y'all still sisters. But a person, all right, I haven't spoken with uh, with you know my uh, my old friend Jazz, right? I haven't spoken with him in I don't know how many years, right? He he used to be my best friend. Like yo, he we're not best friends anymore. It's not because there's a problem, right? It's just we've just been separated that long. Like, yo, we've been separated. Life has happened. And like, yo, we 
We're no longer best friends, right? We, we would have called each other brothers, right? We're no longer brothers in a sense because like, yo, I don't know what the hell is going on with his life and he don't know what the hell is going on with my life, right? And just being able to say that, okay, I know I see you over there struggling, like, yo, that don't mean shit. You feel me? Because like, yo, a brother is not about just seeing you struggle. A brother is going, I'm going to get down there. I'm going to help you get out of there. Like, yo, that's what a brotherhood is. And that's for me too. Like, yo, whatever he's struggling, whatever he's dealing with, like, yo, I need to be down in that mud. You feel me? That's a real brother. Like, you know, friends. All right. Okay, y'all friends. You know? We talking about the, the G code, no snitching. Well, brothers... Yo, a real brother code is like, yo, man, I'm not going to let my brother, I'm not going to let, like, yo, my little brother, like, yo, man, I'm not going to let my little brother go down for nothing I do. Nothing. Like, like nothing. You feel me? Like, yo, that's, that's brother, like, that's brotherhood. It's not about no snitching. Like, yo, my brother's not going down for nothing that, that I do. Like, like, yo, that's not, no. You feel me? Like. Like, like, no, you see what I'm saying? But friends and uh, blethers, <laughs> that's my blether, right? I nah, know snitching. Dog, go on, take that bid, do those 10 years, and hopefully I can, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do in those 10 years that you locked up and you following the G code. Look, man, I'm just going to be jerking off more outside while you jerking off on the inside, right? Like, it ain't no damn code. Like, yo, that's 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 nothing to be that's not loyalty. That's not. That's like, come on, man. That's BS. That's trick knowledge right there. Right? A brother, like, yo, a brother would would, would never do that. No. Like, nah, nah, nah. That's that's not gonna happen. Right? Whoever is the most likely to to finish the race. Like, yo, that's the one who's going to finish that race. So it is what it is, right? If I'm the, the more promising brother, right, I got the more promising future. Like, yo, I'm, I can finish this and I can, you know, have it set up to where whenever you get out, like, yo, I'm going to take care of you. Like, yo, we're going to be good. Then, boom, I'm going to be the one finishing the race. And if it's him, then he's going to be the one, right? Because there's no question about, like, yo, Man, this is uh, Paulie. <laughs> What'd you do with the money, Paulie? Yeah, you a rocker. You feel me? Like, yo, ain't none of that. You know? Like, yo, it's none of that. And that can't be replicated. Like, like that cannot be replicated. And I get, I get it that some, you know, some of y'all, y'all don't have <clears throat> strong family ties. And what I see with my own, like, with my own kids is... Like people see reality and create reality for themselves, right? Like just on a on a any get like yo I I I I can only imagine like yo, I would never bet on whatever my kids is gonna say and how my kids perceived their childhood. Like yo, I would never bet on that because as we watch uh like as we talk about different stories and different things from their past it's like yo that shit didn't even register to them they like oh oh, that happened what the fuck you mean did that happen like you you don't remember (laughs) you don't remember all of these kick-ass vacations you don't remember eating every damn night not being hungry like yo you don't remember that you don't remember having clean clothes on your back right you don't remember that do you you don't, like, yo, you don't remember me getting you up to school and taking you to school every day? Like, yo, you don't remember that? <laughs> but what you do remember, huh? Ah, you, you yelled at me one, one time. Or you spanked me that one. Like, shh, man, get out of here, man. I ain't trying to hear that shit. Like, I ain't trying to hear that shit. Like, yo, say that shit for um, cancel culture. You feel me? Like, say that shit for them. Because that's what they want to hear that. They want to get rally around that. Like they do. They want to rally around that. Right? Like people just see 
reality, however they want it, they choose to see it. Right? So, like I said, I mean, you know, some of y'all, you know, y'all don't have the best relationships with your family and, you know, whatever, man. Like, I can't speak on that, right? Is you, is you, is you ain't my baby. But no matter what that relationship is, like, yo, that's still your family. And I know, like, yo, family, family is it's not like, you know, they all there. Like, yo, you got some crazy ass cousins. You got some crazy brothers. You got some crazy sisters like Dennis. Um, and let's see what time we're we working with. An hour. We're an hour in. So we may we may talk about Dennis and my dad. We may not just because I even had a crying session earlier. Just speaking just a little bit. Right. So, you know, I'm really not trying to. I'm not trying to just cry, right? You gotta let it out, and you know, like that doesn't that doesn't um, bother me. Like you know, like yo, that doesn't bother me. I don't care, man. I'm a human. Like, <laughs> like I'm a human, man. Y'all want to be, you know, <laughs> freedom. Like yo, you want to do all that, man? That's cool with me, man. But you know what, man? Me, I'm gonna be screaming like a little siach. Okay, you try to cut me open from my belly on up and and pull out my intestines like, yo, man, I'm going to be screaming, you know, I'm going to be screaming and begging for my life. (laughs) Like, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, like like that's that's what I'm going to do. All right. And y'all can, you know, look, man, I'm going to do that. I don't care about none of that shit, man. I don't care about none of that. Like, yo, that, you know, what's the saying? What Jay say, you know? What you eat don't make me shit. So go have it. Have have at it. <laughs> have at it, right? So, you know, I'm not trying to discredit anybody's upbringing and the trauma and whatever they went through. Like, yo, I'm not trying to discredit that. I'm not I'm not saying that whatever I went through was was worse than yours, so you should no, no, no. However you feel, like, yo, that's how you feel. And that's that's your choice. I know people don't like when Kanye said that slavery was a choice. I I, I get it. You feel me? I get that. But um, like yo, I don't care. Like yo, it's whatever. Like yo, you just don't you don't like it. <laughs> you know. So however you perceive reality, that's how you perceive it. And I don't have anything to do with that. Like I can't comment on it. You know. Like I can't comment on it. I was reading. About again, more and more black people, you know. Uh, so Samuel, he got a problem with Joe Rogan saying the N word, right? Like, yo, I, I look, man, I can't, I can't come at Samuel. Like, yeah, he starred in, you know, several Quentin Tarantino movies. Who Quentin Tarantino wrote the word down, right, in his screenplay for another black man to say it. Like, I can't comment on that. And now you trying to attack Joe Rogan for just saying it. it's not like. He even called someone this, right? But like, yo, I can't, I can't attack Samuel. I can't look, man. Just, yo, he, he a human, so I mean, he's gonna see things how he see things, and I, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta respect that, right? I gotta respect that, yo, man. Look, no matter what the agenda is, someone has an agenda. I gotta respect that agenda, <laughs> whatever. Like, yo. You know, like, yo, I don't have to agree with it. I don't have to disagree with it. But look, I mean, look, there's an agenda being pushed. There's always an agenda being pushed. So what's any different from this agenda from the last agenda? Right? Oh, uh, this one is trying to get me to focus and get me to feel a certain type of way. Right? So it's like, like, yo, you know, now now now's a problem. But when the agenda was trying to get you to feel some type of way to get you to do something, it was like, you know, I didn't care about it, right? So it's like, yo, it's either I'm going to care about these hidden agendas or I'm not. So if if I don't care about it for you, then I can't care about it for me, right? If if you can't say the N-word, well, then I can't say the N-word, right? Like, if that's how we really go and do it, I mean, because... It's like, yo, man, it's a joke anyway. It's a joke, man. Like, we live in a world where certain words that 
that people can, cannot say. Like, like that's mind boggling. That really is mind boggling. I think. I think we'll. I don't know if we'll have a short. I, Cause I'm trying to think. All right, we can we can jump into uh, Dennis and my dad, right? So, um, you know, my dad grew up on the crime side, the New York Times side. Staying alive was no job. Had second hands. Mom's bounced on old man's. <laughs> so, uh, you know, he grew up in Baltimore, and um, he grew up rough. And tough with his afro puffs. Hey, rock on with your bad self. But I think uh, if I had to, if I had to give a word, you know, for my dad, a few words that I would come up with would be um, inappropriate, uh, a pervert, and. Um, and caring, uh, you know, he really cared about the the youth, right? So I know I said inappropriate, and I know I said pervert, right? But his loyalty to to the black community, it was uh, it was just it was crazy, you know, like it was it was definitely crazy. Like he really cared. About, you know, getting kids off the streets and, and like, just not, you know, giving them an, an, an alternative. You know, like, he, he really cared about it because he, he, you could see that in his life and in his actions without getting paid, you know? Like, like that's how you really go and tell a person. It's like, yo, what do they do? For free, you know, what do they do for free? So, you know, he's running like these programs off the books, right? He's running stuff off the books. And the crazy thing is like, it's like, man, you know, like, yo, just to say it, all right, to say, yo, you care about the youth and we got it, man, the youth is. It's going down the wrong path and they this and they that. But like, yo, I mean, he was there, right? Like front lines, uh, always like coached every sport. <laughs> he coached every sport and, you know, had had uh, kids in these sports, right? And he was there. Look, man, coaches... They wasn't getting no money. You know, like, yo, we talking about like the bad news bears. Like, we, we, we had no uniforms. Like, yo, we had no, it wasn't like, uh, like when my kids, when they got into sports, you know, it was already like organized. It was, it was, you know, stuff is already organized. We talk about Baltimore City. Like, yo, this is not organized. This is just, a couple, a couple guys. It's like, yo, man, uh, I'm gonna I'm get a baseball team on my side of the uh, Baltimore, East Baltimore, and you, you start one on yours, and then you know this way they can start to meet each other, right? Because if you really think about it, like that's the big problem. Like, like even here in Charlotte, like, yo, man, and this is happening all out the country. Like, yo, serial rape, <laughs> like, yo, serial rape is no joke. And serial killers, like, yo, man, that shit is still happening. People don't realize that it's happening, but it's still happening. There's There are serial rapists in these cities, in these communities, right? And, like, yo, they just not, it's just, it's not, it's not breaking through. It's like, it's like this podcast, <laughs> like, yo. A lot of people don't know about this podcast, but like, yo, we hitting it every week. And that's how some of these serial rapists and killers are, right? Like, yo, man, they they putting in that work even today. And one of the biggest reasons for that is 
the lack of of uh, contact and just knowing, like, yo, knowing a person. Lack of community. You don't even know your community. You don't even know the people in your neighborhood. Right? Now, we knew the people in our neighborhood, so you were safe. You know, if you, if you're, and that's usually how the cities go. If you're from a neighborhood, like, yo, you're safe in that neighborhood. Now, when you don't know someone in that neighborhood, you go into a new neighborhood that you don't know, yo, you're not as safe. So what, 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 was, the, what was the solution to that, Right? What was the solution? You know, my dad and whatever, the other, you know, gangsters. Right? Because, you know, from the the 70s, the 70s movement was more of a political movement, right? So you have, um, like, so the 60s and the 70s, you, it's a political movement. So you got these gangs, and now they're becoming organizations. And you can... You can look at this, um, you can like Google it, right? I don't need to Google it because I lived it. So I know, like, yo, I know firsthand, like, I don't need to Google it. Like, this isn't something that I Googled, but I know for a fact because I lived it, right? So because of that organizational structure that the gangs took on, so then you got some of these gang members, some of these gangsters trying to come up with alternative Ways about things to solve conflicts. So instead of, because like I said, if you're not from a neighborhood and you don't know someone, well then like, yo, they come in your neighborhood, like, yo, they're going to have a bad day. Right? Now, what's the best way to start to get to know different people in these different neighborhoods? You got school. Right? School is a good way. But then, really, you got sports. Because a lot of, a lot of kids don't like school right we talking a lot of boys that's the ones that i grew up with like yo we don't like school we, we, we ain't like school like that like yo give me some some trucks give me some hammers like yo put me out get me out there, out in the streets man nobody want to be crammed up in this building all day i'm in a building all day at home right i'm from that age where like yo you want to be outside and that's nothing wrong with people who, you know, this new age, you want to be inside. Like, yo, there's nothing wrong with that. Because this is more in line with school. This is more in line with business, right? So remember we talked about those uh, those hundred hours, those thousand hours on the bus that was that was building something. I was working towards something. If you're in the house all day, then you can handle being in class all day. You can handle being in the library all day. Like if you never even experience it, if you never be able to experience that, right, that college life. But you've been in a house playing video games all day like, yo, it's not going to be tough for you to go into a library. But, you know, some of the video game etiquette is especially today, if you're playing first person shooters and you playing with your group, then you talking, right? And you cutting up and you using all types of language that's, you know, idiotic that we even care about whatever the language is. But, you know, you using some language that's just offensive. And the volume that you're using is offensive for the library, right? But that still doesn't take away that, yo, you can... You can be in a library for six hours, dog. You, you, if you was on that game for six hours... You know, hunched over, hunched over on that that handheld, right? Hunched over on that switch, like yo, you you can be hunched over for hours in them books. If you watching Twitch, right? You watching Twitch for uh, hours, right? You like yo, you can get into a college classroom and watch a professor for hours, <laughs> right? So this stuff transfers over. This stuff transfers over, right? So we talking about just the youth. <clears throat> and oh, I didn't want to be in school. I didn't want to be in a classroom, right? It was pushing us to be outside. I wanted to be outside. Like even now, like, yo, I want to be outside, right? The gamer side of me have developed. I can be inside. It's, it's, it's okay. But, you know, I prefer to be outside. That's just the age that I grew up in where you, you, you were outside. 
So you got all these boys who want to be outside. That's what they are pushing on us, being outside. Well, then how are you going to meet these people? Boom, sports, right? And after you play a game, everybody got to shake each other's hand, right? Everybody got to give each other that. And whether you won or you lost, you got to you gotta show some love to the next person. Now, see, all of this stuff in today's time right now is just standard. This is regular stuff. Right. But it comes from the element in the gang culture from the 60s and the 70s. Right. With them trying to be more political. With the gangs taking on a more political view. Right. So that like, yo, now that I go into this other neighborhood and I'm about to get beat up. I got somebody who can vouch for me. Because if we're all outside and I go into this new neighborhood that I've never been in and they see me, they like, yo, that's Bo right there. Yo, man, we whipped his ass in baseball. <laughs> you know, and now instead of me getting beat up, we talking about the game, right? Yo, man, you some super trash, man. Why you even on the team? Yo, my dad was a coach. Yeah, I can see. I can see, man. You definitely need to, uh, you definitely need to practice more, though. You definitely need to practice more. And, yo, man, you just can't, you know, you got lucky today because we know you, right? Because we can play ball with you. And we can't really beat you up because, like, yo, we're going to see you next. Yo, we're going to see you next weekend. And, like, yo, the coach is going, like, yo, it's going to be, they're going to give us hell, right? So this structure was set up for, to combat gang violence. And you see it now. Just everywhere. Like I said, my kids, they're in sports and they got to do the same thing. Right. But they don't have that element of they're going to be in somebody's neighborhood. and They're going to get beat up. Right. So now they shake. They still shaking each other's hands at the end of the game and they still meeting. Right. They're, they're meeting a pool of people, but it doesn't transfer over. Right. It's still good, though. Like, you know, sports There's so many different elements to it. But but the networking, especially from the hood, from a hood standpoint, like, yo, that's life saving. That's saving a life right there. That's saving a life. So that's what my dad. That's what he did. He formed basketball leagues, formed baseball leagues, formed football leagues, formed like, yo, anything that like whatever the, the kids were playing, like that's what he was forming and getting a large group of kids and then going talking to uh, another gangster and, you know, they get some type of, you know, group of kids and they going, look, we're going to play against each other. Right. And we're going into these different neighborhoods. We're going into the projects. Right. We now we get, yo, you, you get to go down to the projects is man. Like, yo, Baltimore projects is like Chicago projects. I think Chicago projects was worse, but see, I was a kid. So. I get to remember Baltimore projects as a kid. I'm only hearing about Chicago projects as an adult. So my level of understanding and my perception is different. So when I hear about like, so Baltimore, I didn't know, like, I don't know. I, you know, I would have to talk to one of the older gods and, and hear like, yo, and they probably would tell me, yo, man, shh. yo, they was shooting. They was killing people left and right in these projects. Right. As a kid, I don't I don't know that because I didn't live in the projects. I don't know how many people was dying in in Lafayette projects or Murphy Homes, Flag, Flag House. Right. Like, I don't know. I don't know. People was dying. I'm sure they were because the kids like, yeah, they was beating people up. (laughs) You know, like, yo, man, just the violence was crazy. The violence was crazy, man. You couldn't go nowhere, right? So because of the sports, it allowed you it allowed you to go places because it allowed you to meet. It allowed you to meet people, right? Networking. And this is this is life saving networking. Because you know, Baltimore in the hood, like, yo, you down here, yo, you're gonna have a problem. It's gonna be a bad day you around here, right? And just school, school wasn't good enough. School wasn't good enough to stop the violence because what we see now is that even in elementary school, kids will click up 
in their little small groups. So they'll click up and, you know, this gang over here, you know, you'll have like two or three major gangs in a school, right? We're talking about elementary school. And they're keeping this going. When they get to middle school, oh, no, we don't like them, we don't like them. But if the middle school, if both areas, so let's say, you know, most gangs, um, usually it worked like around the corner or um, a few blocks over, right? So once that area gets lumped into a bigger, into like a, um, all of y'all going to the school on the other side of town, well, now those two gangs can come together. But sometimes it don't it don't work like that, right? Sometimes, like, yo, these little rifts are just one or two blocks away, right? One or two streets turn, go down this street, turn, go down that street, and boom. And just that far, and yo, they killing each other, right? So schools don't work. But sports, sports work. Like, it works. You know, like it worked and it worked. I'm telling you guys that it did work because your boy was able to go into these different neighborhoods and they'd be like, yo. Like, yo, man, that's Bo. That's coach's son. Like, boom, time and time again. Yo, that's coach's son right there. Right. So like, like yo, it did work, you know, and and then even after those um even after the game time right he was still he would bring the team together like yo we would we would walk we would walk downtown right that's probably like a 2 3 mile walk yeah i think it's like a yeah, 2 or 3 mile walk so we would walk downtown and you know just hang around the inner harbor we would go to the movies we would go to restaurants right he would he was a hustler. That's another word, you know, that was another word that, that I could attribute to him. You know, he was a hustler. He would, yo, this is, a, <laughs> this is my son's birthday or, or you know, uh, we just won. We just won our first game, right? We lost, right? So he was coming up with all types of different angles, right? Get you a, a hot dog or get you a burger, right? Get you something to eat, right? In the restaurant or you know, they look, man, they get the, man, we helping out the, the young youth, right? We helping out the young black youth. So, uh, so they was, they was ready to do that. They was ready to do that. And I, man, I remember we would just be hungry. Like, yo, we used to go to soup kitchens and, uh, it's, this was more, more of an intimate, uh, affair. So like <laughs> the whole team didn't go, but we went there to eat like me and my cousins, you know, we went there, and uh, I remember, like, I was probably um, well in my teens. I didn't even realize, like, yo, I used to, like, yo, we used to go there so much that, you know, I just, like, yo, I didn't even realize that uh, that it was, like, for homeless people and a downtrodden. <laughs> like, I didn't even realize that, like, yo, I was a downtrodden. You feel me? And, uh and I remember, you know, my cousin, my cousin Al, he like, yo, man, like, yo, those places, like, yo, man, those like soup kitchens, you feel me, that we was going to, like, yo, you know, like, it'd be like Saturday morning breakfast, you feel me? I didn't even realize, but but you saw those people. I remember um, when I was real little, you know, we and we went, and I was afraid, you know, I was afraid of, like, the homeless people. I was afraid of the downtrodden. And I remember my dad, you know, he said, you know, he had to check me. Like, yo, man, don't be afraid of them, man. You know? Like, yo, don't don't be afraid. Right? So, like, yo, we went there to eat. And I'm sure he, you know, he probably even, um, he probably even helped out at a few of them. Right? And he probably went to eat on his own sometimes at, at some point of, in his life. Right? So, like, yo, and, uh, like, that was, a, like, a big thing. And, you know, I don't think I've seen, yeah, yeah, I've, I've came across it again um, in West Virginia. And I've never, like, went there to, to eat. But one time we were doing, we was doing, like, a benefit. Because I worked at an after-school program and I worked, you know, I did a little bit of community, uh, a little bit of community care and community service. Just a little bit, like, 
you know, I can't, I'm nowhere near the level of my dad. Like, like I was getting paid for my shit. So, you know, I can't, and if I wasn't getting paid for it, then I wouldn't be doing it. You know, like we just got to keep it real because we talking about my dad and my dad kept it real. And my dad, you know, like I can't take that away from him. I can't act like we're, we were the same in that endeavor because, because he did it for free. You know, like, and that means a lot. Like, it means a lot. Like, yo, he did it for free. <laughs> you know, you can't beat somebody when they doing something for free. Like, yo, man, it's just for the love of the people, you know? Like, man. So, so yeah, I experienced it uh, later on in life a little bit. But, you know, like, I, I, um, I think, I think, I, you know, a part of me always wanted to run away from that. Right. But. Like I was saying, you know, my dad, like I was, a, I was scared, you know, I was just scared of him. You know, you get to see these homeless people and downtrodden. <laughs> you get to see them, you know, you're a young tyke. Like, yo, man, they looking, yo, they looking scary. Like, yo, man, these cats, they looking scary. Like, uh, what is it? Cannonball Adderley. His real name is uh, like Cannibal. You know, it's a saxophone player, jazz saxophone player. And uh, one of my professors, he was he was telling me, like, yo, he saw him on TV, like, yo, man. Like, yo, this guy was uh, going to one of his little fits because I think he, he, you know, he was battling with, like, some type of mental illness. Like, yo, so he, like, zoning out. Maybe he was even on heroin. Like, I don't know. But whatever the deal is, like, yo, heroin and mental illness, like, yo, y'all can only imagine. Like, yo, man, this is some real illness. If you... If you look like you, if you look like you on a a trip on the uh, on a white horse or the you know tar, it got the the brown horse, the black horse. You like you on a trip on a black horse, like yo. So he on TV, and he just drooling from the mouth, and he just look, he just look like a homeless bum. <laughs> he and uh, he said, man, I remember watching this on TV, like terrified, like. Oh. <laughs> and they zooming in on him, right? That's the type of people that uh, that that young Bo was, you know, was 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 around. Oh, that's the type of people that I was around. You know, my dad had me around that. You know, people just looking scruffly, scruff McGruff out this piece. Only you can prevent forest fires. <laughs> like, oh man. How the hell am I going to do that? Like, yo, man, what if, what, what if it, it rages up then? Like, yo, man, only you can get the hell out of the forest when it's a fire. Like, man, I'm telling you, man. Like, yo, those people, those people, man, that's, that was crazy, you know? But, but he, boom, he had us around that early. I didn't, so early, like, yo, I didn't even realize what it was, you know? Like I said, my cousin Al, like, yo, Yo, that was for homeless people, man. <laughs> like, man. Like, I remember I used to be happy Saturday mornings after you watch uh, Saturday morning cartoons, you know, take that long ass walk. You take, like, yo, because we walked everywhere, man. I remember we walked, we won some type of, um, he won bowling tickets. You know, I've never, at the time, you know, I've never been bowling, right? I was young, you know, and, uh, we had to we had to walk. This is a place called Jessup, Maryland. So I don't even know how he got these tickets. I don't know how. I don't know how he got it. Right? <laughs> I mean, but look, man, check this out. You know, check this out, man. So we uh, we got to walk to a place called Jessup, Maryland, from uh, from East Baltimore, right? Which I don't even know. Let's let's. Let's pull up the mat. Let's go to Jessup. Because this was like, yo, this, you know, my kid mind. Yo, this was like a six hour walk. <laughs> like, yo, this walk was, uh, this walk was long. This is the longest walk that I ever took in my life. <laughs> like, yo, man, this was the longest walk, man. Let's see. Jessup. Let's go. I'm sure it'll um mm. 
Mm-hmm. Maybe with an E. Here we go. Jessup. All right, let's see. All right, so that's six hours from here, right? So, um, we need a point. There we go. Get our point. So, then that way I can see how far it was um, from from East Baltimore. So, we found Jessup. Boom. Oh, my God. Like, jeez. Jeez, Louise. Like, yo, man, this is far as hell. Hugging on my mama from a jail cell. So, Jessup. Damn, that's far. So, yeah, yeah, guys, damn, it was far. So, this is a six hour drive from here. <laughs> so, man, that was a six hour walk from where we were, right? So, man, it's like I said, this is the longest, this is the longest walk ever, man. And I remember. You know, just feeling like, yo, like, are we, we left probably like 10, 12, you know, uh, around 12, uh, 10 or 12, right? And, um, and we walked and walked and it was like getting dark and we finally, we finally get to this bowling alley, right? This is the first time that I, you know, went bowling. And, uh, man, I just had so much fun, right? Had so much fun. And I remember on the way back, (laughs) on the way back, man, once, you know, after we was done, because remember, I told you, my dad was a hustler. So, so he, you know, he definitely finessed more, um, more rounds, right? So we got to play a lot. You know, like all you can bowl, like yo, like this was our bowling alley. So we stayed for you know for a long time. We just bowled, and then uh, on that on that stretch back, like yo, he you know he got us a ride, right? He got us a ride, man. So you know, so that's a like yo, man. That's how you know. That's the type. That's the type of man he was. That's the type of man he was. Now, yeah, he he had some uh he had a dark side as well. Okay. Like we gotta look at both sides of the coin, right? Because the coin is still a beautiful coin, even even on the opposite side of it, right? Because you get a chance to just look at why a person like the why. Right? <clears throat> the why. So he was big on integrity and respect. Which you guys know, I'm really not um, <clears throat> at, at this point in my life. Like, I don't really care about none of that. Like, yo, <laughs> like, like, yo, man. But I understand. Like, I understand. You know, from his from his standpoint, right? And and I definitely, you know, would have liked to have talked more about about his life because as a kid, you're not thinking about about you know your parents' life like that. You know, you thinking about, uh, man, what the hell happened with the Dark Phoenix uh, saga? Like, yo, this X-Men just went off. Like, yo, they ain't even, there's no, no, no ending, no nothing. Like, yo, they not going to tell us anything. Just like, yo, man, it's a Dark Phoenix and boom. Right. I'm worried about. What the hell happened to the Dark Phoenix? What happened to the X Men? Like, you know, like yo, it just boom is in syndication. I didn't even know it was syndication. Just, I mean, I've seen this episode. What the hell? What? what? Like, yo, the shit just went off. You know, I'm worried about that, and I'm not really thinking to to actually talk to my dad about his life and to see, like, yo, tell me about your life, man, from your earliest memory all the way up until now. You know, and I and I never got that chance. And I think that I think that's what you know. I think that's what what hurts as well. It's not just the fact that he's no longer here, right? 
but it's that the it's a lot of the story that I don't get a chance to know, and you know it's only because of my perception and how you know culture is American culture in the eighties was real on just yourself, right? And I've always been a type of I've always been a listener. I've always you know I always like to listen, right? So you know I would have loved to have listened to his story, you know. Um, be before before me, right? What was the story before me, right? So that would have um, that would have been good, you know how how he met my mom, right? Like that type of stuff. And you know when I had the opportunity, I just wasn't thinking about that, right? I was thinking about the Dark Phoenix, <laughs> you know. I was thinking about Dark Wing Duck, like get dangerous, right? So. You know, I'm thinking about that, you know, uh, freaking, uh, what was that? DuckTales. Ooh, do, 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 right? So I'm thinking about all of that stuff, and that stuff isn't important, right? So, again, it's just a waste of time for, I think, just for the poor people. I feel like that is the trap, right? We talk about the trap, and the trap, people look at it more as like, all right, the trap house, like, you know, drugs and all of that is a tra- it's trapping you into a into a system, right? It, it's putting you into the, you now you're in jail. Now you're this, now you're that, right? It's putting you in that situation and, and your life is messed up. But just from a cultural standpoint, if that's all you got, like, yo, that's a, that's a trap. Like you'll be full of drugs. Just if you don't, you, you're not really thinking about your lineage and where you come from. You know, you're not thinking about your future. You're not thinking about how, the things that you do impact your life. Like, yo, that's a trap, you know? Like, that's a, that's a real trap. That's a real trap, right? So, so yeah, so, you know, so he, he definitely, um, the, the good side, right? <clears throat> now, let's uh, dip on over to the dark side. Uh, take it down on the wild side. Take it down. <laughs> so, um, let's see. All right, we got to get to... Um, the per, the pervertedness right to the inappropriateness still along the lines of um kids right we're still on that line so i remember we went down we went down to um we went downtown right this is he got the whole team like he got you know and the whole team is it's not like you know 20 or 30 of us it's probably like uh 10 i would say like 10, maybe 10, 12 of us, right? 10, 12 kids. He got us downtown and it's late. I mean, like, yo, we're downtown. Like, yo, we went, we go to Crazy John's. Like, yo, we just living it up downtown, right? <laughs> we living it up. And uh, <laughs> like, we, we, we go to eat. Like, yo, we just living it up downtown, man. 12, like, yo, 12 kids, <laughs> And, um, you know, so we're walking back. Like, I remember, I told you guys, it's like, you know, three mile walk as we're walking back and we get, we get to, um, we get to not even the entry point to our neighborhood. This is still well before the entry point. So this is probably like maybe three or four blocks, you know, before the entry point, right? <clears throat> We get there, but we're coming up the main street. You know, like I said, it was like 12 of us. And the police, you know, the police come. Police, you know, meet us, right? They meet us. And um, and this is the inappropriate. This isn't the perverted side of them. This is just, a, you know, just to kind of let you know. Wow. Police come up on us. They, you know, they like, yo, a couple of the parents... Um, Parents, they don't know where their kids are. You feel me? Like, yo, you got 12 kids, right? Now, some of the kids are, you know, like my cousins and, you know, my brother, my older brother, right? So, like, yo, no police is called on them. But, you know, some of the kids are like, yo, just <laughs> regular kids in the neighborhood. Like, yo, man, this guy didn't, uh, he didn't check in with the parents. Like, yo, he didn't tell the parents that, like, yo, we was going to be out till, you know, 
till like 2, 3 a.m. Like, yo, 4 a.m., right? So just imagine, yo, your kid is supposed to have this game at maybe 12 p.m., 1 p.m., and he's gone, you know, you don't hear from him, you don't hear about the team, you don't hear about nothing, you know, until, um, you know, it's like 3 a.m. It's like, you know, 1, 2 a.m., right? So, uh, like, yo, the parents, like, yo, the parents, they, you know, because they looking for their kid, they don't know where we're at. And um, police is involved, and I remember um, this mom, this mom, uh, one of the homies' moms, you know, and he, man, he was always, like, yo, even after this situation happened, you know, he was always a, always a friend, but I don't think that he, he even came, he still came over some, a little bit, right? He still came over a little bit, but not as much, right? So he didn't come over as much. And, uh, you know, I remember we went over to his uh, house and we're still like, we're still Facebook friends. This is like, you know, like, yo, this is like a really good childhood friend, right? And, um, and his mom, like, yo, just start attacking my dad, you know what I mean? Like, yo, just like, I'm talking about aggressive, right? He's a, she's aggressive, okay? Um, she, Boom, she's just attacking. And, uh, you know, look, man, my dad handled it, handled it well. Didn't grab her, you know? Didn't like, yo, didn't stop the onslaught. Just boom, just took the Scooby snacks, you know? Put his hands up. He, you know, he knew how to block. Like I said, like, yo, my dad was definitely... Um, like, you know, one of the top guys um, in, you know, in Baltimore, as far as like goons, not, you know, as far as um, like, like, you know, drug kingpin making money. Like, no, no, he wasn't that, you know, he wasn't that. But, you know, he definitely was a, was a savage, you know, in, in his youth. And like I said, that transferred over to more of an organized thing, right? So, you know, he just taking the Scooby snacks and, you know, he uh, he understood like, yo, he sympathized with uh, with the homies mom, you know, and uh, and it was more like, yo, it was a bunch of parents like, you know, it was, you know, like I said, man, it was it was quite a few parents. And boom, but he got, you know, like, yo, we walked every kid home. You know, <laughs> but it's like I said, it's like two and, you know, it's a mob kind of building, like not a huge mob, but, you know, a, a mob of parents. Right. And loved ones and just trying to figure out, yo, you know, did he like take our kid? You feel me? Kidnapped our kid. Is the kid dead? Like I said, this is like the 80s. This is like the mid to late 80s. So, you know, you got. um what is it like America now? Well, you got like kids on milk cartons and all types of shit like that. So, you know, this is a, just a crazy time um, for the youth. Right. Which is, is always. But, you know, this is like coming right out of the um, the what the Atlanta child murders. And, you know, so you, you're just following that type of stuff. So um, child molestation. You feel me? You just you just coming from all of that. So, you know, it's just a bad time. Like, and, you know, this isn't cell phones and stuff. So, you know, who knows? Like, yo, maybe some, you know, some people didn't have house phones. Like, yo, we didn't have a house phone. So some families didn't even have a house phone. So, I mean, I'm sure he contacted somebody and let them know, yo, we're going to go out. But <clears throat> but he didn't contact all the parents, right? This was a field trip without you know, the two week notice without that no look, man, we about to go on a field trip. Everybody get there two dollars. Look, man, I, I I didn't even go on those field trips. Like your boy was so poor. I couldn't even go on the two and the five dollar field trips. I just had to stay in the school. Like, yeah, I know I wanted to be outside. So, you know, it, he didn't even have a two week uh notice. He just just sprung it. Look, man, this is our first this is our fourth loss. Look, man. <laughs> We go. We gonna celebrate, man. We are gonna celebrate. So, so you know, he did. It was a lot of that where, and I can I can say you know because, you know, other things where he was like, yo, I, I you know I didn't know, and the type of person I am, I'm I'm I'm, I'm a, like a critical, just nah, you knew, you feel me? That's just the type of person I am. I'm real critical on people, right? 
um, you know, I was critical on him on some things, but, you know, just kind of reliving this story and like, yo, he honestly, you know, didn't have any bad intentions when he took everybody down, downtown. And we just like, cause we used to go downtown all the time. Like just walk down there and just hang out all wee hours of the night. Like, yo, you know, get back home like two, three AM. Like, you know, we used to do that a lot. So, um, you know, so that's one, right? Where it was it was innocent, but at the same time, like, yo, you know, you coming off all of those bad things that's happening in the city and just in the world in the United States and like, yo, people people wasn't trying to hear that, right? So <clears throat> that homie, like I said, he he kind of, you know, well he, he I don't think he was able to go out with this no more. So he he probably couldn't even play on the team no more, you feel me? And a few other people. So that happened and then he, like I said, on the perverted side, just on he was he was definitely like you know, look, a womanizer, like yo, man, he definitely liked his women, you know. So, so a lot of times on those trips downtown, it would just be me and him, and boom, he would meet some woman, right? So he would meet a woman, like I remember, uh, this was like after, and like yo, he was meeting people, like yo, just people out. This is the first time I saw an interracial, you know, relationship <laughs> was my dad. He had this uh this white woman like he uh he met her I don't know if it was a, if it was like after a wrestling match or cuz we used to always go downtown and like I said he was a hustler right that's one of the words so you know he was scouting for tickets like he would uh we would always go to these you know different wrestling events because uh what was it NWA so I think it's before before or after NWA it was WCW. And then after WCW, I'm not really sure. I think it became something else, right? <clears throat> but so you had uh so before WCW it was NWA, right? And like WW before WWE it was WWF. So Baltimore was um was a big was a big spot, a big hub for wrestling on the East Coast. So those type of um, organizations would come down and do big events. So like we had a WrestleMania. We had a WrestleMania in Baltimore. We had um, we had like whatever NWAs. Um, we had like a Royal Rumble. You know, so like, yo, we had like big events. We had big events in Baltimore um, back in the 80s, you know, <clears throat> like the 70s and the 80s and stuff like that. We had... We had big events. So I remember one time we went and uh, I think I told this story, you know, before. And um, we went to it was either like like a WrestleMania. We went to something, but we couldn't get tickets. Right. We couldn't get in, you know, I guess whatever they was charging, whatever the scouts was charging. He was working all of his finesse. Like he worked everything. This is WWF. I'll never forget this. You know, he worked every look, every hustle, every scam that he could, but we could not get in. So at the end, we waited. So after it's all over, right? And just knowing how things work now, like, you know, it, it's a long time if everything is dying down. But we waited and we were around the parking lot, right? We was waiting around. So we we're waiting around the parking lot. And, um, and we see Hulk Hogan, you know, and this is, you know, this is WrestleMania Hulk Hogan. Like, yo, this is, you know, I want to be American, fight for the rights of every man. Like, this is the Hulk Hogan, okay? This is the Hulk Hogan. Hogan. And somehow, some way. My dad, he, boom, like, yo, we're, I'm in front of Hulk Hogan. You know, I don't know what he told him. I was dying from cancer. I don't know what he told Hogan. You feel me? I don't know what he told Terry. <laughs> but whatever he told him, Hulk Hogan picks me up, puts me on his shoulder, walks me around a little bit in the parking lot, you know, puts me down. You know, gives my dad a, a you know, like a, a little five or, you know, a handshake, whatever they was doing back then. You know, he gets back on a tour bus. But, 
you know. So like we didn't go into the event, you know. We we tried, but you know. But I had, uh, but I was I was look Hogan picked me up, and and the crazy thing about it, like it happened so long ago that even I even questioned the validity of the story. Like man, was that even real? Like it was so unreal, right? It was so unreal that it was like, man, even now as I think about it, it's like, man, was that a real memory? You know? But uh, but yeah, it was. It was. Like, yo, it was crazy, you know? So so during, you know, these wrestling events and different events, right? Different concerts and all types of stuff, you know, he would work it and just leave me um like in the in the arena, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Like yo, man, he was—he was—he's was like yo, man. You just gotta, you know, you gotta figure it out, right? When we go to the movies, like yo, like I would go see uh, Transformers, and he would go see, or I don't even know if he was seeing a movie, but like yo, I would be watching the movie, and you know, I don't know. And I remember, like, uh, I know sometimes because I remember it was one movie, him and my uh, brother, my older brother, they went to go see uh, Last Boy Scout. But I don't remember what movie I saw because this was like um, I talked about the old movie theater, but this is like our new one. This was like the new one. Like so when you think about a movie theater today, like in today's time, this was the first one like that that I've ever been to. Right. This was the turn because previous they were um, it was like an old type of movie theater, and it was like scary. Like yo, what I like the my memory of it, you know, it was pretty scary. Like yo, man. so yo, you just go watch a horror movie in this movie theater. Like yo, you are terrified going into the into the theater, you know. So then we finally get one of the new ones, like the the type. Like every theater looks like you know the the new one now, right? But um, our, and they they have uh like. 12 movie you know 12 rooms and it's huge concession stand multiple concession stands and and you can do endless popcorn like you know that's the way it is now so this was the first one like it and I remember so then I would go to a movie so I think when Transformers my brother went in there with me you know because then we was playing we was uh, hustling the uh, other. We was hustling the other people. We was hustling um, other people in the theater because we would be like, uh, you know, I bet you or um, y'all want to see a magic trick. So this is, you know, this is what my my brother, my older brother, he would do this to people. Y'all want to see a magic trick? You know, for uh, I think it was like you know a dollar or a quarter or fifty cent or something. You know. Uh, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make my my little brother's finger disappear. <laughs> so uh, so you know so he was hustling. You feel me? Like yo, he was older, so he was learning the ways from our dad. You feel me? Like yo, he was a hustler too. <laughs> and uh, you know we'll 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 speak on him. Um, I, I avoid him now, and it's not because of anything that he did. I just you know I just don't want to see him in his new current state you feel me like i just uh i know that it's gonna break my heart so i i just uh when i go back to the city like like i uh i always avoid them but um so you know so we hustling doing transformers so so it wasn't transformers the movie it was something else right it was another movie because him and my dad they went to go see the last boy scout and i went to go see something else so, and then my movie Ended early, so then I walk into the last Boy Scout and I see like the the end, right? So I'm watching like the end of it, and and you know they're watching a the movie. So that's how he would do a lot, right? It would just be <clears throat> it's either gonna be the three of us or the two of us, right? It just depends. So a lot of times on the two of us missions, um, he would meet a girl, right? So you know, back to my first interracial uh, relationship that I actually saw with my eyes in Baltimore City. Like, yo, because you just didn't see it. Like, yo, you just didn't see black and white people mixing. Like, you just didn't see that. And uh, so we're out. And like I said, I don't know what event it was. Like, I don't know what it was, man. Because, you know, downtown Baltimore got so much stuff, especially back then, that was going on. It was so much stuff 
going on back then. So many events. And, uh, you know, we're out. And whatever the event is, I don't know. I don't remember. But it's, you know, it's late. It's after the event. It's after the event. And uh, and my dad was definitely vulgar as far as, you know, um, his language. Right? So, uh, like, I'll say cooch, but, you know, that's not... That's not a high frequency word in in my dad's vocabulary, <laughs> you know. Like uh, he going he going he going full blast. <laughs> so uh, so you know him and this uh, white woman, they're on a bench, and it's around like the art and cultural center, and boom, they're just making out. You know, he's rubbing on her cooch, and you know I'm I'm just playing. I'm just you know. I'm just out there playing. You feel me? Like, yo, like, you know, he was, look, man, he, he going to expose you to a little bit of everything. Okay. He going to expose you. And that was, you know, boom, he's just rubbing all on her, you know, and I'm just like playing in front of him, you know, come, I don't know. Maybe I had a, a toy. Maybe I was just using my imagination. You know, I was a Muppet baby out that piece. So, uh, Little Gonzo out there. So I'm just boom, we just out. You feel me? And then um and then eventually we we go home, right? So I'm watching this all the time, like yo, every weekend, boom, he he's just out, you know, making out with women and and um <clears throat> he would use like the movie theater. Yo, that's where he was picking up. He's picking up these these ladies. You feel me? He's picking up these ladies. And um I remember it was one girl. This was like, you know, around, this is my age. So, so, um, it had to have been a movie that, you know, that I watched. It had to have been a movie that I watched as a little tyke, right? And I guess it was another mom and her daughter, and they were watching this movie as well. So then, um, then I got to go to her birthday party, right? <laughs> so, you know, I'm at the birthday party, and, you know, I'm, you know, I'm not even thinking about, you know, where's my dad? You feel me? <laughs> Cause I'm just there at the birthday party. I'm, you know, hanging out with this girl and, you know, it's the first time that, you know, I get to actually just like, you know, just, just, you're just around a girl and you don't have to worry about like if she likes me or if this or if that, right. We, we kind of met each other at the movies and uh, my dad takes me to our birthday party and then he's gone. Right. <laughs> He's gone, and you know this is like you know well after the party, and um, and I remember just like you know crying once it was time to go. You know, like I didn't even want to go, and I don't, I don't remember her name. It was so long ago, like I barely, I, I know, I definitely know I couldn't pick her out of a lineup of uh, of two people. With two pictures, one of them being my picture, right? Like I could be like, all right, for a, for a billion dollars, was that her? Like, ah, no, right? I couldn't, uh, I couldn't pick her up. But I remember, you know, I remember going to that birthday party and, you know, just having like just having a good time, you know. And uh, yeah, yeah, he definitely, my dad, you know, he was with the mom. You feel me? So, so that happened a lot, like. <clears throat> He definitely met a lot of women at the movie theater. He would bring me along. You feel me? He'd bring me. Sometimes my brother would be there too, right? And um, you know, I remember one time I kind of walked in on him um, while he was actually engaging in in uh, carnal in the carnal sensuousness, the sensuousness of carnality, right? So he 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 already in the he in them cheeks, and uh, you know that, I think he was like you know don't tell your mom you feel me <laughs> like <laughs> you know like yo uh, look man this you know don't be telling nobody about this you feel me you dig look man you you know can't be me letting them know I'm I'm up in them cheeks right so so yeah yeah that's the type of person he was and then. Um, 
Him, I remember him and my mom, they was getting they would get into arguments, you know. And my mom really didn't like to argue, she didn't like to yell, you know. Uh, I never really saw him uh, hit my mom. I never saw that. <clears throat> but sometimes, you know, they would uh, be getting to that arguments. He would, like, block the door. Because remember, I was scared to stay in my room. So I, I was in their room a lot. You know, I was in their room a lot. So, and you know, those arguments and stuff, he, he would block the door. And and he would hold her down, you know, sometimes. Like, I don't even know, you know, why they would be arguing or anything like that. But. You know, I did, you know, he would hold her, you know, and, um, and I remember, you know, she would be like, you know, I got to pee or I got to use the bathroom or whatever. And I remember one time he, uh, I guess he just, he didn't believe her or whatever. So, uh, you know, she peed on herself and, you know, she was mad and he let her go, you know, of course. And, you know, she was mad, you know, so like, like he wasn't, you know, he wasn't, uh, he wasn't like abusive far as like physically abusive right towards my mom but he could have been emotionally abusive like that I don't know like I'm not aware because remember you know I'm worried about uh Braveheart or I'm worried about freaking uh what's up with the dark phoenix you feel me so <clears throat> like so uh like yo where the hell is, where, where, where are the silver hawks like yo they, man, they took the silver hawks off like yo silver hawks like I'm just worried about that so I don't really know if he was um emotionally or I can't really say he was verbal I but you know I don't know I don't know if he was verbally abusive cuz my mom she she didn't like stay in the house a lot you know she she was out right and we'll uh we'll get to my mom's story as well you know but so that was you know their interaction you know but yeah he definitely like yo man you know he was a player, like he wasn't a rolling stone in a sense because he was always home, you know, like he was always, he was always home just kind of looking at the time. So we're over two hours, but, but it's all good. You know, we're in there, we're talking about my dad and maybe, uh, <clears throat> next week we'll do whatever hour, uh, 45 minute intro and then do Dennis. Right. But, um, but yeah, so, you know, he, he definitely had a lot of women, a lot of sitches, if you know what I mean. And I was there, like, yo, he would take me, take me along for uh, all of these um, adventures, right? And then we were like, yo, we was having, we had a lot of it, a lot of adventures like that. And um, you know, that that's pretty much like I'm trying to think of any like. Um, <clears throat> I think, you know, that's him pretty much. Like, uh, when he left, right, it was, um, I guess he had, you know, fallen in love with another woman or whatever. Like, it was, um, it was some woman. But I want to say, you know, they could have had other issues. Like, yo, they could have, you know, been going through whatever type of problems they were going through. And, um... You know, like, oh, all right. Yeah, yeah, I kind of remember. <laughs> so, <clears throat> um, I wanted a Super Nintendo, right? I wanted a Super Nintendo. And, um, you know, I was asking, you know, can I, you know, get me a Super Nintendo or whatever. And, uh. And he was like, I think he said, like, all right, you know, look, we're going, we're going to save up and, you know, I'm going to get it. Like, you know, it's going to take a minute, but, you know, eventually I'm going to get it. <clears throat> and yeah, it was cool. Like, yo, all right, you know, eventually, you know, eventually we're going to get the Super Nintendo. Right. So then we, we get up, I guess he's saving for, you know, however many weeks or, you know, months or however. Like, yo, it got to take a year. We finally get to that point to where, OK, we're about to get the Super Nintendo. And then. Um, he was like, you know, something came up or whatever the story was, you know, something happened and, uh, and he wasn't able to, to get the Super Nintendo. And that was cool. Like, yo, I was, you know, look, man, you know, we'll get it. I mean, eventually you feel me like, yo, I have it this long. I mean, 
you know, eventually we'll we'll get the Super Nintendo. Like eventually we'll get it. So so that wasn't a problem. That wasn't an issue. But I think after maybe like a little bit after I was I was kind of like just I don't know why I was on the, the their little dresser drawer, right? Because at this point where um I'm like I'm okay with being in my room like we're in a different house and you know I'm cool I'm in my room you know like like that's not a problem and uh and I was you know for some reason I was in their room and the um I want to say I saw a receipt or something I saw something on the table and it was like for a diamond ring Right. So which, um, you know, all prices got to be. Uh, what is it? Um, inflated or deflated because of uh, because of inflation. Right. So. So, you know, three hundred dollars t- today is not the same as three hundred dollars back in the 90s. <clears throat> right. The, like early in the early 90s, right? Early to mid 90s. It's not the same. So, um, so, you know, once I saw, you know, I saw the receipt, you know, and I thought I saw some other stuff that kind of, that let me know that, that, um, you know, that he had, you know, he had like a girlfriend he had, that he was serious about. Because remember, I mean, I've been on different adventures with my dad, where you know he's messing with these sitches but but they were but they weren't serious right like you know for years like we was you know I would say for years like yo I've been going out with them you know probably 50 11 years right we talking years a long time there's a lot of sitches and uh so boom he got this one this is a new one and he's like yo he's pretty serious about this one you know to the point to where <clears throat> he's putting he's put i felt like he was putting her over me you know i felt like he was putting her over me and uh it was like yo man what's up like you feel me cuz he was so big on loyalty you know but now like yo you putting her over me but you know me looking back i can understand that look man you know, you got to get it in where you can get it in. You got to clap them cheeks. OK, so, you know, like, yo. Look, little Bo, you, you, you'll, you know, you'll be all right, man. Another <laughs> another month or two, man, we get that Super Nintendo, man. You're going to be all right. You feel me? But I really felt like, you know, he was um, transitioning to leave because, you know, he got this woman a ring. Like, yo, like, I'm sure he was trying to marry her, right? Like, which he didn't, you know, him and my mom wasn't married. But, you know, I don't know. I, I doubt that it was because of him. You know, I think that that's just, I don't think my mom was really even, like, looking for that. You know, that's not something that she, was like, wanted. You know, I want to be married. And, you know, so I think maybe that's why um, I never talked to her about it. Just because... My mother is real uh, secretive, and you guys will learn that uh, in whatever episode that uh, that we cover her. But, <clears throat> but uh, you know, but they didn't get married, and and I don't think it was um, I don't think it was because of him. You know, I don't think it was because of him. You know, I think he wanted to be married, but of course, look, man, he going, you know, he like his sitches though. So, you know, take it, take it how you gotta take it. So, I mean, if you gonna marry him, you know. Just know, or look, somebody gonna know that uh, it's it's some other side action happening. So, so I definitely felt, like I said, I felt like he um, he he chose her over over us, but really over me, right? Like yo, and like I said, like, he really pushed <clears throat> loyalty. So now you're showing me inconsistency. So it's like yo, nah, man. I, so I can't, I can't. I can't use you as a beacon because, you know, because you're flawed, right? You put her over me. So we're um, we're out, like me and the homies. This is like during the time of the Onyx uh, album, right? The first Onyx album. 
because uh, my older brother, like he had it, so we would listen to it all the time. So I'm outside with um with the neighborhood gang. So the gang had changed, <clears throat> and I, you know, I was there when it was the old gang. So of course I'm there for this new gang and this new transition. Like I'm there, so you know I got a. Uh, you know, I got a couple hitters. So I remember uh, my dad, he was like, uh, he was like, you know, it's time to come in the house or whatever, you know, go in the house. Right. He didn't. I, and, you know, I get it, man. You know, you don't want your son around that type of activity because it only leads to, you know, just prison. Right. Whether it's going to be robbery or hurting somebody or drugs or, you know, like, yo, it's just not. Yo, man, you don't want your son around that type of stuff, right? And, you know, we hours at night. <clears throat> all right, from with, you know, my dad, and, you know, look, I'm not getting into any trouble. I mean, he's, you know, getting in them cheeks, but I'm just, you know, playing with my imagination. I'm just, you know, it was just my imagination was again, do, 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 running away with me. Yeah. Right? So, but, you know, out with the with the little gangsters, like yo, man, shh, y'all listening to Onyx, <laughs> like, like oh my goodness, man. So, um, you know, I remember him saying like, uh, you know, like it's time to go in or go in the house, whatever. And I was like, uh, it was fresh off of that, you know. He had picked, you know, chose this woman over me, so I was like, nah, <laughs> you know. This is the first time that I um that I rebelled, right? It's the first time that I, you know that I rebelled against uh, against my dad, you know. So he was like, "What?" <laughs> you know, I'm sure he was like, "Man, this this little cuss smoking, he about to get beat down, right?" So <laughs> so you know he you know came you know he came over, but. Like I said, I had you know a couple, uh, I had you know a couple young lions with me, who uh, who had already been in the system. Like yo, you know these, you know these cats already been to prison. You feel me or jail? You know, um, they already you know been to jail, like yo juvie and stuff like that. So uh, one of one of my uh, one of my you know friends at the time, you know. As as my dad was coming down, like to you know to get me or whatever, um, my you know my friend at the time he was like, "Yo, man, you want me to uh, you want me to stab him?" <laughs> and uh, I was like, "Yeah." So so my dad gets down, you know, and he's telling me, you know, you better get your ass in the house and la 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 blah blah blah, and I'm like uh, I'm like you know I'm just mad. I'm like, man, you're not my father. You know, and, um, you know, I probably said it maybe a couple of times or whatever. And, you know, he just stopped and he looked, you know, I could just see, you know, like, like, man, ain't no love in the heart of the city. Ain't no love in the heart of town. Do 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 do. Ain't no love in the heart of the city. Right. So he, uh, you know, he, you know, collected himself. Like he didn't even keep engaging. He was like, like all right, you know, and um, and then he went in the house and. I want to say, like, within a few days, like, yo, he was gone. You know, he was gone. Like, yo, boom. That was it. Like, you know, let's give it, you know, like, yo. It wasn't It wasn't even a week. Like, it was probably, like, just a few days. But remember, like, remember what I told you. Like, he already, and this isn't, like, you know, um, this isn't saying that he was going to leave anyway. But, you know, he was going to leave anyway. Right. Uh, he, you know, he found this woman that he was getting serious with and she was serious. And I'm sure that she wanted, you know, more. And, you know, he wasn't getting that with my mom. So. So, uh, you know, after me and him had that little spout. Uh, 
and wash the spider out. <laughs> so, you know, that was that. Like, yo, so he was gone. You feel me? And then, um, you know, I guess he moved in with the lady. And I remember, like, I remember what she looked like a little bit. Like, I think I could pick her out of a lineup um, of, like, you know, let's give it six people. And, um, but she's in there, right? Like, I could do that. I could be like, oh, boom, there she is, right? So, um, she was, she was all right. It wasn't, you know, she wasn't. She wasn't bad on the eyes. She was she was all right. And uh and I didn't see him for a while after that, right? So I think uh, you know, boom, he moves in with her. And I don't think they got married. I don't think they got married though. They could have, but I don't think so. So but he moves in with her. And then um then we got evicted, right? Because he's not there to help with the money. You know, so, um, so then I want to say maybe, maybe like a few months later, we got evicted because like, uh, so he wasn't there. So then a few months, I think, um, the gas and electricity got cut off. So that got cut off and then maybe a few months. So like, let's give it like three months after he leaves, the gas and electricity gets cut so get cut off, and then uh, maybe you know three or four, or five, who knows? Might be six months. I mean, there's a process, so um, I could look and see what was the process, right? That a landlord has to go before the court, and you know, like you know, whatever that process was, um, <clears throat> it just equaled up into. Uh, my birthday, you know, happy birthday, happy birthday, get the hell up out your home, you are now homeless. <laughs> oh, man. So, you know, that's, look, man, that's just, that's how it is sometimes, you know. It's cold out here. It's cold out here. So, look, man, we got evicted. You feel me? And, I like, I wasn't, I still, I I didn't blame him. Like, you know, I didn't blame him. Um, Like, yo, the reason why we got put out, you know, like, I didn't blame him. Because, you know, I was right at the point to where I didn't care about the Dark Phoenix no more. Right? I was, like, right on the edge of... Really not caring about the dark phoenix. And, um, you know, and at that time, we, uh, you know, our neighborhood kingpin, he had started to uh, take an interest in, you know, everybody in the neighborhood. So, um, but once we got evicted, then, you know, I told uh, Dennis. So I already knew Dennis, you know, previous, and we'll get into, you know, to that how it crosses over. Um, we'll get into that, but, uh, later, you know, we're, we're going to wrap up now, but, <clears throat> but, um, but I already knew Dennis. So, you know, I told him and he was like, yo man, you know, like yo, you can move in with me for a little bit, you know, until we kind of figure this, until we figure this thing out. So, um, so boom, we move in, you know, I do, you know, I mean, it's everybody dispersed. Right. So, so I move in with Dennis. Uh, I think my mom, she was, um, and Dennis lives like right around the corner from my house, right? So all my stuff, like all of our uh, belongings are out in front of the house, right? It's all in front of the house. Um, I go around the corner. My mom goes down the street, just like on the same block, just a few houses down with uh, the lady, uh, Miss Dusty. Which um, which was you know, a good a good woman you know good woman she took my mom in, <clears throat> and uh, you know I'm over I'm with Dennis, so you know we're we're homeless and um, and then I run into my dad again, right, and and then he um, because you know Dennis gets into uh, into some stuff in the neighborhood. 
right? And of course, you know, he's not going to tell me like, yo, this is what it is because, you know, we're coming from this age of secrecy. So, you know, I'm hearing like, yo, I'm hearing the revenants of it, but, um, or the remnants, (laughs) revenants, I'm hearing the remnants of it, but, um, but it's not really, you know, because I'm still like, yo, I got to figure out, you know, like I'm about to start selling crack, like, (laughs) you know, like, yo, it's just no other way. You feel me? I'm out here. I'm homeless. My mom homeless. Like, it's no other way. Like, it was crack or nothing. And my my homie Lucas, he was going through, like, the same thing. So we like, yo, man, it's like, yo, we got to sell crack. You feel me? So we got that, all of that going on. And, like I said, the neighborhood kingpin, <clears throat> he's taking an interest in all of the um, guys in my neighborhood, right? So... But I'm not close to his, like, I'm not as close to his nephew as some of the other guys are. Like, like they're hanging around a lot, and I'm not, right? So I'm like, yo, no, nah, I need to, you know, like, yo, man, I got to hang around more. You feel me? Like, yo, I got to get in. Because y'all remember Earl from another previous story. Like, yo, he had already, you know, he had already left, right? Because Earl would have put me on. I could have just started selling crack for Earl. But, um, you know, Earl was gone. Like, so... You know, everybody gone, you know, and it's like, look, and you got to, you got to do what you got to do. <clears throat> so, uh, you know, in that transition, in that period, that's when, you know, um, I see my dad again. Right. And, uh, you know, we hug it out like, you know, and I'm sure I said I was sorry, but I didn't tell him like, yo, I found the ring. And, you know, I felt like, uh, like, yo, you put her over me and, you know, the sitch, this big booty sitch, right? <laughs> so I didn't, you know, I didn't tell him that. I don't remember it if I did tell him, but, you know, we was cool because that's my dad. So, you know, all right, I'm mad at whatever moment, you know what I mean? But, you know, I'm still my dad and, you know, I'm still his son. So once he heard that, uh, you know, we got put out, he was like, yo, you can, you can, um, you can stay with me, right? So, he lived around, he moved around the corner and he was living with this guy. They were roommates. So that woman, you know, so this is probably like, I would say uh, how much time passed between when he left into now was probably like maybe eight, probably eight months or, you know, about a year or whatever, you know, so it could have been like a year. I think it was probably a year, you know, that I didn't have uh, that, you know, I didn't have my dad in the household. So, um, you know, I go in, I go in and move in with him and, um, you know, look, it's just, it was, it was cool. Like, you know, I didn't have to, because, you know, when you got, when you have, uh, when you have friends, right. When you live with a friend, like, yo, there's, there's a stipulation, right? Like you can't really be yourself when you're around your, your friend, right. And you always got to. You know, like, yo, you get, you always got to worry or it's just always something. You feel me? When you're talking about friends. But when it's family, like, yo, you can just be yourself, right? Like, if I'm, you know, over my brothers, like, yo, I can just be myself, right? I'm, if I'm well over my dad's, like, yo, I can just be myself. I don't have to, you know, worry about some type of stipulation or this or that. Like, yo, I, I can just be myself, right? So. So I'm over there with, with my dad, and you know, look, he's gonna be himself. Like, yo, man, he's, you know, he's gonna be himself. So, um, I, you know, I know, I definitely noticed his. Uh, I think he was either rubbing his nose more or like just playing with his nose, right? <clears throat> so it didn't, but it didn't catch me before, right? So I've been around, like, yo, I've been around like crackheads and stuff like that. Like, I've been around, like, the bottom level crackheads, like, who used to beat them up all the time, right? So, I knew them, but I didn't know, like, the working level crack and cokehead. Because I I was around them, but I didn't know it, right? So, um, it was brought to my attention about um, about a family member. Like, yo, you feel me? And I was like, damn, I didn't even realize, right? So, we was like, uh, like yo, remember that stuff we was playing? We was doing all that stuff? Like, yo, that, that was a... Uh, that was their crack pipe. You feel me? So like I was brought aware of it. I didn't, I wasn't aware of it. Right. So, but I was around functioning addicts, right? I was around functioning addicts and, um, 
So, you know, I'm saying my dad, you know, he kind of messing with his nose, like mainly like just like, you know, either just messing with it, either picking it or just rubbing it, you know, moving to like in a little circular motion, you know, like like his nose was irritated. And um, his roommate, <clears throat> the way they had it, it was like a loft. It was like a huge, you know, on the floor type loft. So it was his roommate, but it wasn't like, um, like, yo, they had their own spot, like their own space, right? Like their own kitchen, their own, you know, two, two bedroom, right? So they was like floor mates, <laughs> you know, like, yo, they was like floor mates, but it was a one, you know, a one bedroom. It was huge though. You know, that's the type of houses in Baltimore, like, um, North Avenue, those type of houses are huge. They're row houses, but they're like big, you know, remember I was telling you what my great grandmother, like she, um, we had an apartment just on the second floor. Right. So it was, it was something like that. But even, you know, like I said, they were like floor mates. So, so, you know, his floor mate, I guess his floor mate was like, yo, he was really trying to get high. And I was in the way of that. Right. So, um, and then I caught him in, in another engagement that I'm not going to speak about just because, you know, I'm just like, nah, that's just, you know, it wasn't nothing, um, like jail worthy. You feel me? But just the people involved, you know, I'm just I'm, I, like, nah, I'm just not going to, um, speak on that. Right. But I caught him in something with some people and um and it's not you know smoking crack cuz or shooting up cuz i've caught like my aunts and stuff like that so you know what i mean like that doesn't you know affect me but you know i definitely uh i definitely caught them in some activity that's like and i think after that you feel me cuz so now he like yo he can't he can't snort you feel me cuz i think he was snorting just by you messing with your nose like he could have been smoking coke or crack or you know i don't know right I don't know, but, um, he, uh, he couldn't, you know, snort it up and he couldn't, you know, clap the cheeks the way he wanted to. So, uh, so he, you know, calls my aunt and then, and lets her know, yo man, your sister got evicted and you feel me? So, and, uh, you know, a little bow, they just out here in the streets so then I had to, um, and I, this was, you know, I was going to high school. This was, you know, so, you know, a good amount of time had transitioned and, um, I'm in school and, uh, you know, I had to move, you know, which it was, uh, it was like, you know, he was like, yeah, man, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna be moving with your aunt, you know, your, uh, your aunt is going to take you and your mom. Right. So, you know, y'all can kind of get back together and stuff like that. So, you know, I mean, that was, it, it wasn't on no, you know, I think I was just a little mad, but not really, you know what I mean? Because even then I could understand, like, you know, like, yo, you know, you just, you're still looking out for your family, you feel me? Like, in, in this situation, but, um, but I definitely could see that, like, yo, he wasn't able to move the way that he was moving as far as his drug habit and use, and I don't think he wanted me to, to see him. You know, like that, cause um, like I never saw him smoke, I never saw him drink. You feel me? Like it was just certain things that I just never saw him do. Yeah, I saw him, you know, clapping them cheeks. Remember, I couldn't tell my mom. Don't tell nobody about that. <laughs> so, you know, that stuff it was fine. He didn't care. You know, look, man. You know, you had to get in the cooch. So uh, remember, that wasn't his uh, high frequency word. So you know, look have at it you feel me so look this is how it's done <laughs> so uh yeah yeah he was definitely uh you know perverted and just he was about that you know that life that clapping them cheeks right so so eventually boom we move in <clears throat> with my aunt and boom you know so that is going but i think i ran into him maybe a year after that you know, so I didn't see him because I was, you know, living on the, another side of town. So, um, so yeah, I didn't probably see him for like a year, two years, right? So then we finally see each other, you know, and we embrace and he's crying and, you know, 
you know, your boy Bo has been working and you know what I mean? Like, but I'm still a kid. I'm still a teenager, probably about 17 or whatever. 17, 18, you know, so I, I, you know, I haven't seen him since, you know, since I was 14, right? So I haven't seen him for a few years. And, uh, you know, he's just, he's glad to see me and he's all, he like a little bruised up. I'm like, what, what the hell happened? Right. So I think in that time, I think I did see that he was, that he married. So, you know, maybe I saw him like once or just in passing. Right. So, <clears throat> so I saw him and, um, you know, he was all bruised up and he told me that, you know, he got into some type of altercation argument with uh with his wife and you know the wife at this time she kind of looked like my mom you know like I could I could see you know similarities um between my mom and uh and this woman whereas the the woman he I can't say they left us but you know they left us for she she didn't look like my mom you know she looked she was like a totally different right so so, you know, this one that he marries, and he probably did marry that other woman too, but, you know, I don't know. But, um, but yeah, so he married this woman, and he got into some type of altercation with her outside, and the uh, neighborhood dudes beat him up. I'm like, what? You know, like they jumped him. So I'm like, nah. You know? He's like, nah, you know, don't uh, don't worry about it. You know, I'm all right. You know, I'm like, nah, nah, man. Like, um, so I think he, you know, told me like where he moved to and I went over there and, you know, I'm just like scouting out the neighborhood like, oh, nah, man. But, you know, I understood like, you know, they just, they come into the defense of, you know, of the woman and you feel me? It's just like, yo, that's just hood politics. Like, like when you get into an argument with one, like you get into an argument with, with all 20 of them, you feel me? And then. And once one of them start fighting, like, yo, they all going to fight. And, yeah, you could be you could be winning against a few, you know, whether it's five. But, like, yo, man, they going to keep coming. And, and it just keeps building and escalating. Like, yo, you get, like, yo, you can get beat to death. You feel me? So, you know, he didn't, he didn't get beat to death. <laughs> so that's the good part. He, and, uh, and then <clears throat> eventually she died. She died from uh, AIDS, I want to say. And I don't know if... I th- Yeah, he had to have told me because... Um, because, you know, I don't think like any of my cousins would have told me. You feel me? So I think he died. She died from AIDS. She died from HIV. And I'm like, yo, are you infected or what? And he was like, nah. So I guess she was shooting up. So they could have been shooting up. Like, you know, which... Like, damn, man. You know? And... Um, <clears throat> And once I think, you know, when I finally found him, you know, whatever time after, you know, they had already broken up and she, his wife had died from AIDS or some type of complication of AIDS. Then he told me, you know, that his, uh, his heart was, it was just bad. You feel me? Like, yo, he had a bad heart. And, um, you know, like, yo, cocaine, like, yo, that's what a, a heart, cocaine will mess up your heart. You feel me? Like. I'm not really sure about heroin and stuff like that, but uh, cocaine will mess your heart up. You feel me? So, um, so who knows what type of you know concoction he was on? And in this whole story, this whole two hours and oh, almost two hours and forty minutes. Jeez. Yep. So in this whole two hours and forty minutes, I didn't speak on my sister. Which, you know, I apologize. Um, but, you know, my sister developed a habit, a drug habit. And, you know, so I'm, you know, back once I reconnect and he's letting me know all of this stuff. And he he's he was like, you know, she was blaming him. Well, well she blamed me <laughs> for, you know, because she felt like, like, yo, you know, um, she, you know, that's her real father. And, you know, he's over there with me, you feel me? And he should have been over with her, right? So, you know, that created some issues, you know, between the both of them. But, um, you know, it worked like, 
I think towards the end, you know, they had they were rebuilding their relationship, and he was rebuilding a, rela- a relationship with me, which it never really ended. It never was over. It was only, you know, I only rebelled because, like I said, I just felt like he, you know, was putting that big booty sitch over me. But I, you know, it got over it, like, you know, but um, but you know, we had kind of rekindled, and he was just letting me know that his heart was bad. And, uh, you know, he was letting me know, like, yo, man, shh, you know, like, yo, I'm going to be dying soon, you know, pretty much. And, uh, you know, I definitely took it hard. And, uh, you know, <laughs> I remember him, he was like, you know, man, I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't think he was going to take it this hard. <laughs> oh, you know, so, you know, I remember the uh, the whole thing, you know, but, you know, that makes me laugh every time, you know, so even though, you know. So even though, you know, uh can cry from it, I can also laugh. <laughs> He's like, man, I didn't you know, I didn't think he was gonna take it that hard, man. Like, yeah. So, you know uh, I think you know, I went on <clears throat> about just about living prayer for probably two more years and then I went to go let them know that um that I got into college, right? So I got into uh, West Virginia State University. But no, it was West Virginia State College, but I didn't know <clears throat> what college it was, right? So this is probably like two two years later, right? I didn't know. It could have even been, yeah, yeah, I think it was like, like a year or two years later, you know? So it was probably like a year. It was like a year. Cause it was that holiday, right? So I remember, I remember just like crying. It was like maybe in April, or May, or whatever. Like I don't even remember what month, but I remember crying and, and feeling like y'all, like I'm like, why am I crying? You feel me? Like it was like just just great sadness just came over me. You feel me? This is just like like I'm just walking down the street, and then I just start crying, and but I didn't know why. Like I didn't know why. Um. And I was thinking, like, yo, what the, what the hell? Why the hell am I crying? Like, I don't have nothing to cry about. You feel me? I don't have no reason to cry. And uh, and then so Christmas comes, you know. I'm, I'm, so I get into school. It's like August when I get into uh, West Virginia State. And I told, I remember, I told my cousin. He was like, yo, which West Virginia? Uh, you know, you know, which West Virginia college you go to? I was like, yo, it's, I don't know. He was like, yo, is it a uh, gold? I was like, yeah, it's gold. He was like, yo, is it blue? I was like. Like, uh, I, it, might, it, might, it might be gold and blue. And so then, you know, for like a hot second, I thought I went to West Virginia University, right? But I went to West Virginia State College. Eventually it became West Virginia University, right? So, um, which I didn't even know anything about WVU, like, because I didn't play football. So, you know, like, none of, none of that stuff meant anything to me. It was just my cousin uh, <laughs> trying to figure out where I was, you know? So, um, so yeah, for like, you know, for like a minute, for like, you know, two days or a, a night, you know, because I'm talking to him at night. So like for a few hours until the morning, you know, I, I was like, well, you know, uh, my cousin thought I was at WVU. Right. So. So um, college, uh, let's see, Christmas break comes, you know, I go home, I'm over my cousins, you know, and then um, I'm trying to, you know, reach out, uh, get in touch with my dad, let him know I'm in college and um 
you know, from the last time I saw him, he gave me his sister's number, you know, like, yo, you know, just, you know, get in touch with her. She'll, she'll be able to, um, you know, get you in touch with me. So I have her number. I'm calling her to let her know. And I think, you know, I was like, hey, you know, this is Bo. It's like, oh, hey. I was like, yeah, you know, I got into college, you know. And she was like, oh, yeah. I was like, yeah, you know, where's my dad? You know, I want to uh, let him know. And then, uh, you know, she, she, you know, gave me the news, you know. So, um, <clears throat> and the crazy thing is, like, I didn't even, um, like, I didn't even cry at that moment. You know, I just told my cousin, you know, so I told my, my cousin, like, my cousin Al and his brother, the one that I cried over. <laughs> Cried over her. Look, man, I'm a sitch. I ain't even worried about it. You feel me? Your boy's a little sitch, and and I like it. I'm just a sitch, and I like it. Want to see me cry over cinnamon, right? So, <laughs> so I didn't even, you know, I didn't even cry like when she told me. But we was laying, you know. I told my cousin. I told you know, you know, his mom is there, and you know, like yo, they taking it hard. You feel me? And then even like my homies now. And their parents, like, like yo, like, you know, they took it hard. And then uh, that night, you know, I'm laying down, you know, I'm sleeping. Uh, I'm over at my cousin's house and I'm, you know, sleeping. And, and that's when, you know, uh, that's when it really hit me. And I'm just, you know, crying. So, you know, it wasn't even like a, like a you know, a hard cry. It's just, you know, you just keep it in, let the tears flow and, you know, so. So, yeah, yeah, that that was that. Like I said, like, you know, I definitely missed a, few, a lot. You know, I missed a lot in this story. But that was like the overall general thing um, of, you know, that was my dad. Like I said, he was definitely perverted. Like uh, there was a scandal. It was some, it was uh, like a fifth grader. This is when I was in, I've told this before. I was like um, maybe like between the first or third grade. And uh, some girl said that. He um he said like um something along you know your breasts are growing or you feel me like which he didn't use that word like oh, he was you know titties ass and pussy and you know stuff like that he was he was vulgar but he didn't like cuss he cussed but it wasn't a lot you feel me like it wasn't you know like I cuss more than uh, than I remember him um, cussing but but um but he he definitely you know said something inappropriate right and. She took it that way, like you know, I don't, I don't think he tried to touch her or he did anything like that. But you know, just you know, just saying stuff like that. And this, he's working in a school system at this time, so you know, just saying something like that. Um, you know, like back then, even now, like yo, it's just inappropriate, right? So you just, you just can't say stuff like that, right? So whatever it was, like even if it was. Like, you know, like, oh, you know, you looking uh, real beautiful, right? And licking your lips. Like, as you, you know, you can't do that to a 10 year old girl. You feel me? So, like, I'm not saying that that's what he did, but, you know, whatever he did, like, yo, she took it in whatever way. Like, whatever, you know, she was using her power. Like, yo, he ain't say nothing. He could have just said, hey, how you doing? But, you know, maybe her mom or her peoples didn't like him and they was, you know, look. You know, say you felt offended. Like, I don't know. You feel me? Like, whatever the truth is, I don't know what the truth is. But I do know that um, that he that he got fired and he couldn't uh, work in the school system no more. You feel me? So he, he didn't get charged or anything like that. So, you know, it wasn't that serious in a sense. Like, he didn't rape nobody. Um, any minors that I'm aware of that anybody came forth, right? He didn't do any of that. But, you know, he definitely, you know, said something that was... That cost him his job, and I remember they was he was working at the hospital, and um, he gave some white woman a picture of him with the shirt off, right? So, you know, he got fired from that. So, you know, and so he was definitely, and you know, like I said, y'all know, I've been on several adventures with him and different women. So, he was definitely, he definitely loved the ladies. Okay, he was, he definitely loved the ladies. And, you know, that's just, look, he was a, you know, he was a pervert. He would say any type of sexual thing like, yo, he loved women. You feel me? He loved their bodies. Um, I remember uh, he had like this Smurf porn. This is, I'm like, yo, I'm like five between, I would say like five to 
eight. You feel me? Like I'm not 10 years old. Like I, I've seen this way before the fifth grade, you know, <laughs> but, um, he had like this Smurf porn or, um, Cinderella, uh, like the Cinderella and not Cinderella, but, uh, Snow White, Snow White and the seven dwarfs. Like he had like that type of porn. And I remember, like, I remember my brother watching it, you know, and that's when I saw it. I was like, you know, I didn't even know what to do with it. You feel me? I probably got an erection, but I ain't know like, yo, you just, you know, um, keep going back like you cocking the gun, right? Well, back then we just had the six shooter. So, you know, it wasn't even nothing cocking back or, you know, like I didn't know anything about that. Right. So, um, but I remember seeing, you know, I remember like my brother watching, <laughs> watching that porn, right. Which he got it, you know, from my dad, like he, you know, was exposed to it from him. Right. And I remember my dad maybe showing, maybe he probably showed, um, somebody else that wasn't, you know, like family. Right. So, so yeah, he was definitely inappropriate. You feel me? And he was, you know, he was definitely a pervert. So, you know, but, um, you know, but look, he was, he was still a good person. You know, he's still, like I said, it's two, two sides to the coin. And, you know, he, he definitely had a lot of good in his life and he had a lot of questionable things (laughs) As well, you feel me? That if he was still alive, I would be like, "Yo, man, what the hell was up with that, man? Come on, dog, you out here, um, you out here, uh, free balling right now, okay? You out here, uh, with raw dog in this, man? What, what in the world was you thinking, right? So, uh, <laughs> so you know, I would definitely uh, question him on that type of stuff too. But like I said, I mean, look, he was still, uh, he was still a good person, you know, and then and he definitely left his mark. On uh, on the community, and I think in a positive, he left a positive mark on the community, you know. And you know, for that ten year old girl, I mean, I'm sure you know she probably still has nightmares. <laughs> oh, but uh, Reese's p p p p p c c c c c c c c c c c c c c c c c c c c down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. And the hitsy bitsy spider went up the spout again. 